Dieting for a little over a month now. It's actually been Three since times. March uh, six, the six, and yeah. uh, today is April eighth. And we're gonna do our weigh-in, but we're not just doing any weigh-in. We actually have a guest. And it's not just any guest, and it's not it's just the man, our, the myth, the yeah. legend himself. It's our first guest. It's some of you know him as Jono. Some of you know him as Afro Puff. <laughs> here on the Ina <laughs> Brothers, here on the Ina Brothers podcast, we call him the Godfather. Yeah, for a while. Let's please welcome our very first guest, John, the Godfather of Oh, is that what you two in? John, thank you for coming out, and let's just get right down to brass tacks, because Tommy and I are starving. You guys are starving. I'm yeah, so what we're going to do is, so. we're going to do the weigh-in. So last time we weighed in, I was 208.8 pounds. Yes. Tommy was 238.8 pounds. Yes. Uh, and look, I'm just yeah. going to say it. Tommy's been going to the gym every day. I don't know. Hey, one of us, I don't know who's going to win. Yeah, I'm what not I can sure. Say is so I, you guys are doing straight pounds. You guys aren't doing like body mass. Percentage loss. Okay, yeah. Percentage loss. Okay. All right. So uh, do you, I know you guys are starving. Do you want to just get this over with? Or? Oh, yeah. Well, dude, we're, not only are we both starving, but and let's just. I've been also working out pretty hard as far as weight. So <laughs> yeah. I, I might have gained some weight in muscle. Who knows? Well, t- when I got home today, because I was out in Santa Monica today. I got home and Tommy was kind of pacing around the house. He looked like he was like shaking. And I'm like, Tommy, what's wrong? <laughs> He's like, I just haven't eaten. And look, I had gotten up early this morning and weighed myself. And at that point, I was like, I that, the reason I left this morning was to go work some extra hours at work because I knew I lost this competition. <laughs> maybe, maybe. So Is I was like, working on a Sunday? dude, I went to work on a Sunday <laughs> because I was like, I'm gonna have to pay like 125 bucks, which is the prize money, unless by some freak show dude you gain enough muscle with all your workouts yeah to actually because i did lose some weight so i did wait, a little bit so, too so wait hold on in your head you were thinking okay wait if i yeah. work today then i'm gonna be able to like subtract my dude, yes. a little bit. yeah i was like oh i wasn't gonna go to work today <laughs> oh, i was gonna get ready that's, that's the mathematician <laughs> uh, 80 bucks i'm only losing it's like 150. 125 oh oh, better go i better go get some get some extra money so yeah i'm prepared to lose this thing and i will write you the check we'll make you out like a big check and everything like all that right. 125 but uh, let's actually do this officially. Johnny's going to weigh us in. I see this guy. Uh, all right. So well, I'll go first, dude. So we'll start there. Should we, should should we take the mics? mics? No, or? Leave, no, leave the mics. All right. Fine. All right. So I was 200. Wait, who's Mike? I was 208.8 in, on March 6th. And now a month and a day later, I am. We're finding out right now, fellas, on the official Taylor scale. You know what's crazy? Because when I thought I was lost, when I weighed myself this morning, I was 205 point something. I think it was 205.8. So you lost a pound since this morning? Dude, I have not been eating. And that was like, like a since dump. 6 a.m. All right, here I go. Here's Tommy Iden up next from 238.8 to 229. 229.4. Oh, good. Yeah, he lost the extra point four on you, Mitch. Uh, <laughs> wait, so he lost about eight, almost 10 pounds. Wow. So the crazy thing is nine point something. The first week nine point four. Yeah. yeah, that first week I went down ten pounds, and then the second week I was like, okay, down twelve. A lot pounds. of water weight. Last week, I went to Franks twice. I went to All You Can Eat Sushi <laughs> yesterday. I was like, dude, I went to All You Can Eat Sushi last night what, too. Joe? That's why I feel dude. so bad. Yeah, no, dude, oh, Joe, Mama. Mama's, Mama's sushi. Oh, Mama's got in Lakewood. Yeah. Yeah, the, the first week, is you're really pumped. Second week, I was pumped. Third week, I was like starting to slip a little bit. You know, you get in a little Cheetos here and there. And then this week, it's just been all these events. I was like, ah, oh, Franks, what? Not Fr-. And you, as you well know, Franks is not just, you know, just a hamburger and some fries. No, this place, you, lo- you leave there. You know, they got to roll you out belly, like a dude. Oompa Loompa, yeah. dude, and freaking. Dude, they need wheelbarrows in the back just in case. Because that, you, yeah. you can't, you shouldn't be able to <laughs> Here's your gravy shake, son. All that food that they have. Delicious, though. Yeah, really it's awesome. Good. It's it's home style. Very filling. You guys ever go to the first one that was right, uh, replaced the Nest. The Nest is now. On a laundry. Yeah, yeah, right, right. It was like a little. It, it's always wall. packed, right? It's always yeah, packed. Yeah, it was so small. It was, uh, so the first I went there, dude. I went there right the nest, after right? it. Everything, I feel like. Some of the best restaurants that that were in Bellflower that start on Alondra moved like there was kind of like hey well we're gonna do it yeah you all there was Fron- Franks yeah. Ham Bones uh-huh. the Nest showed up out of nowhere yeah. you know somebody drove a car through freaking 
uh, what's that? The Johnny Rebs. Johnny Rebs. Oh, they wow. didn't move. They didn't move it. They just built like a outdoor patio because they're like, well, we can't afford to lose a restaurant, so we also can't afford to put up a wall. So we'll just you know, put it's funny. Up. Last night I a actually went to the first Johnny Rebs in Long Beach. I oh, didn't the, know that, dude. I didn't know there was which a, one in Second Street. Uh, no, 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 no. It's actually in the middle of nowhere. I think it's like Willow and uh, Long Beach Boulevard. Or no, no, no. I'm probably completely messing that up here. This is why we have Google, right? All right. Wait. So Tommy, tell me what was your official. Uh, what what was your new weight? Two oh nine point four. That's right. Two oh nine. Two oh nine. I'm sorry. Two twenty nine point four. Two twenty nine point four out of two hundred thirty eight point eight. So that'll tell us what percentage of your original weight you weigh now. Hmm. So you weigh ninety six point zero six percent of what you used to weigh. So, so he lost four. He lost four and forty. Yeah, therefore he lost three point ninety four pound uh, percent of his body weight. Oh yeah, three three point nine four percent. So if that's his. Oh yeah yeah. yeah. Then uh, what did yeah, I weigh? So. Two, like what? Four pounds exactly you less, were right? Four, four pounds, pounds exactly. exactly. All right, so two o four point Jinx. eight divided by two o eight point eight means that I weigh ninety eight point zero eight percent. So Tommy did win. We have a winner! Kill the kids! Kill the kids! Kill the kids. Right. Give me something to eat. I'm starving. Yeah. Right, let's go grab some food and come back to the cave. Now, hold on one second. I unofficially also started losing weight. Oh! oh. So, I'm, I'm not trying to jump in for the prize. But, <laughs> but I have taken off my shoes. He Actually, shaved yeah. half of his beard, so he lost three that's, pounds. That's right. The beard holds most of the weight. But I started off uh, March 3rd. Okay. Okay. Close uh, enough. 250. 50 pounds. 250. 250. Now, I, I exactly to the T. Exactly. Let's weigh it in, baby. Let's weigh it in. To the All right. T's. And then we'll find out is if John was actually playing the game with us, if he would have won. Let's see. That would have been fun. 255. No. <laughs> John's weighing in. What does he weigh? Let's see. 245.2. All right. Five pounds. 245.2 out of 250. 245.2. Two. Out of 250. Solid. So you weigh 98.08. You lost the exact same, same percentage as, as I did. Yeah. <laughs> nice job, boys. And, where, and so look, right. here's the difference. What did I do? I just cut out as much be- like crappy food. I feel a hell of a lot better. Good. I Good. don't weigh a lot less, but Good. I do feel better. Tommy, on the other hand, he was eating great and he was exercising. Yeah. So as you know, dude, I wasn't exercising. I've got... From between editing and uh, you know yeah. the podcasts and stuff like that, you're, you're sitting down a lot. Work. You're in office, Dude, blah, I'm blah, sitting blah. on my fat butt. Yeah. Tommy is waking up at 6 a.m. and I'm gonna give us like you earned this prize money because you. you were up every single morning early, busting your ass. Freaking high end dude going to to the gym and I don't even know if you were doing it again when you get back but I also do know that you were going to bed early a lot of those nights I was mm-hmm. here yeah. up late dude you're like I'm going night night dude yeah <laughs> so uh, dude good for you and like thank you you're ready for a slice of pizza or what I sure am baby all right let's go get it right. yeah well yeah. Learned. well learned all right we're oh, back nice. in the studio uh, Tommy is talking about what he would do with the money he said he's gonna go buy a GoPro yes. So that's rock and roll. And you know what? We also just found out because now we're back in the studio. We got the pizza out. We got the wings. Yeah, uh, we're just time for a pig out now. We got blue cheese and uh, ranch. Oh, so yeah. Covering all our bases. Tommy said that this morning when he woke up, he weighed 238. Or, 233. I'm sorry, 233. So what I said was, well, let's run the calculation and see if you would have won if you did, did it that way. Because Tommy went to the gym. He sweated out. Well, I was at work just making the money to pay the winner. Uh-huh. 233 out of 238. Point eight means that he would have been ninety seven point six percent of his current weight weight, which means that had he not gone to the gym this morning, he would have still won. I can't say the same thing if you had eaten though, because mm-hmm. look, we're, it was it was down to like one or two percent. I was doing massive cardio. I do dude. I was taking like fat burners this morning. I did three 15 minute sessions in the in the in the sauna. Right. You know what though, Mitch? I think you should believe in yourself a little more because you preemptively <laughs> were like, "I'm going to work earlier so well, I can make the money because yeah. I might lose." No, man, come on, have faith in yourself. Brother. Well, listen, I have so much faith, but you are smarter. And that and that. that three weeks, in <laughs> that first three weeks when I was losing the weight. Look, if I had lost 10 pounds, which would have been done in the first few weeks, I would have won because you lost less than 10 pounds and I weigh less. So. All it really so the longer have, actually was against your favor pretty, pretty much. If you, did, if you did less than a month. Yeah, but we're, we weren't going to weigh in each week. And I wasn't weighing myself every night because, look, this last week, like I said with the Franks thing, 
I think there was like a Big Mac that got thrown into the mix. Oh my god. I'm just kidding. But uh, really, there was a lot less of I don't, very little fast food, less breads. Um, yeah. But what I really want to do uh, first and foremost is uh, let's you know since we John, you're our first guest and you're such an uh-huh. old friend. Like mm. John is like loved by all. Yeah. I want to talk about. How do I know John? Like, where, what, who is this guy that we have on our podcast eating pizza with us right now? And we've talked about him before. Just here for the food, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey. uh, so when, when I was in el- elementary school, uh, I had a friend named uh, Jonathan Galvan. He had a brother named Victor, oh. and uh, they used to. Their house was on Cornuto, right across the street from Johnny's old house. And uh, I was over at uh, Victor Galvan's birthday party because his brother Jonathan it's invited me, bomb. and then. John, uh, Big John, who's here right now, he was actually at that party. So he's like, hey, you want to ditch the party and go play video games at my house? Mm. And it was already kind of getting late, and I was like, hey, I have to go home. That's my trap right there. So, yeah, <laughs> that was it, dude. It's like, dude that, 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 set, yeah, that sealed the freaking tomb. You want some tang? So it was like, oh, what, almost 9 o'clock. I was probably in maybe elementary or middle school. I said, I got to get home. Your dad comes back to my house with you, and he says, hey, hey and he knew my dad. So, oh, that's right. Yeah, they had, they had a uh, a business kind of. Yeah, they was like prior, talking right? about cell phones at Excel or whatever it was. Do we at know time. how long? Like, when did that happen? That Do we was know? that was probably late nineties. Okay, I, I would think late nineties. No, I met yeah. you late nineties, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's when this ni- day was the so, first time I met you. So when my dad came, like, oh, this is your son. Oh yeah, I did business with yeah, you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How long ago did that happen from when we first met? I think no. I think like that our dads went, met before we did, basically. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know when they That's met. That's awesome. All I know is that. Uh, yeah, so he shows dad. up. He shows up with you. And yeah. You're like, and Joe and my and uh, who's your dad mm-hmm. and my dad Tom. They were talking. They're like, hey, what's up? And then Dreamer, you were there, and you're like, hey, can Mitchell come over today? And my dad's like, yeah, for sure. So I get the PlayStation. I bring oh, all my man. all my video games. We go back to your house, dude. Your your cousin Andrew's there. Wow, your, your, really? Your cousin Andrew is there. Ryan was there. Shout out to Andrew and Ryan. Shout out to Andrew and Ryan. Uh, and <laughs> then I busted out a, a fake copy, or it was like a burn copy, back when PlayStation 1s had chips. And it was Metal Slug X. Wait, wait, wait. What, before PS1, didn't we didn't we divulge in N64? Or did you did you have PS1 and I had N64, so you brought yeah. your PS1? Cause I, yeah, I remember this. I didn't have a PS1. I was N64 all the way, baby. No, and dude. Then, and, which, in my and, opinion, probably has just as great of games. Like, well, actually, GoldenEye, dude. Oh, we've had a oh lot. Oh my of- <laughs> god! Yeah, I mean, dude, we did that just a few years ago. We had a Gold the Eye GoldenEye reunion, reunion yeah. night. It was me, you, and Josh, and my brother. There's and- photos of that night. It I was know. Documented because it was so good. But you're right. Oh, I, I remember think, that. I think PlayStation One games were, oh, first of all, they were so much cheaper. Right. But you know, you had that load time comparatively to N64. N64, it was just instant, but the cartridges were like sixty bucks a pop. Yeah. And it's funny that you had burned copies of already a cheap. System. Metal Slug that's, game, that's yeah. Hilarious. Oh, it was really cheap because back then we were still on allowance. Or you know, I was working at what that my you first job. You were working job, back then. I was working since I was fourteen. So well, you weren't fourteen when we met. You were. You if were it was nineteen ninety nine, I was. You were younger. Yeah, I guess so. I guess oh, I would have been eleven. Maybe. I would have been eleven. So maybe not yet. If I was still on allowance, I couldn't afford it. But we had a, a PlayStation game, a uh, PlayStation with a chip, mm-hmm. and our cousin would just give us burned games that's for free. Cool. Yeah. So. Because even at fifty bucks, and I remember Tommy and I saving our money for for uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. You know, oh. I think it was forty nine ninety nine. But the difference was, yeah, there was load time with PlayStation, but with uh, PlayStation, you also had to have a memory card. And I don't recall yeah. the the N sixty four the games you could save onto the cartridge. So I remember when I first got my N sixty four, it came with a memory card, which didn't make sense because. I never needed it. Right. It was, you know, kind of like a slot where you put the Rumble Pack. If you remember, if you guys remember that, the Rumble Pack. Oh, totally, packs. dude. Star Fox. Oh yeah. <laughs> the Rumble Pack. The Rumble Pack. So there was also a little slot, and I don't know how. Extra hundred dollars for a vibrator. Yeah. M- maybe. <laughs> maybe it was like. <laughs> maybe it was like. Uh, <laughs> oh, I felt like I'm in the game. It's like, oh, it's so much better. Da, 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 da. Um, That's before I, they were built into the controller. Yeah. It, oh my god, way before. But I think it was like the memory space was what I don't know. Well, like one megabyte or something. It was just so low, and and you never needed it though. It was just something that yeah, it saved directly onto your. Uh, oh, more pizza. Don't mind if I do. I'll forget everything I'm saying right yeah, now. Pass those wings too. Oh yeah. Yeah, take them. <laughs> yeah, we are still and eating. the blue cheese. And uh, hey. so, 
So, no, N64 did save onto the console. Here's the blue cheese coming in. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Rocking you guys deserve it. All right. Uh, 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 um, double but, or yeah. nothing, dude. Double or nothing on that so, weight loss. So, because we play... Oh, no. <laughs> we, we should wear ourselves after. <laughs> oh, my God. We should wear ourselves well, you after. you guys gain it all back... Well, there's boxes of pizza and wings here, guys. This is possible. Uh -huh. Okay, I and be, road sodas. I'd be even more impressed. Actually, <laughs> I uh, think I could put on four pounds of weight right now. Um, it's easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All this bread and cheese and deliciousness. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we played a lot of Metal Slug. That was like our first game experience. Yeah. You know, we're kids. We're just like, yeah. Hey, I have PlayStation. Let's play. You know, and just that's it. When you're that young in the '90s, like the, that's best friend like material right there. Like, let's just play video games because it's all. I mean, of course, though, we were part of the generation. I think that also <sighs> we still went out to play. Yeah. You know, we weren't just. It was indoors. a good mix. We were like within the transition of. Um, oh yeah, hey, let's go play hide and seek. Let's go hide in our neighbors, you know, like garages and see if you guys can find us. Like it was that. We had that kind of dynamic. Then, of course, video games coming out. Oh, we can do so many things that we can't do in real life. You know, just that nature of it just, of course, drew us in. And uh, PlayStation, though, yeah, was where it was at. Well, dude, I, I for sure know uh, you were always active when I was, you know, as long as I've known you, you've always been a musician. And I really want to dig into that later on. But sure. as far as this gaming stuff goes, because yeah. it wasn't long after, <clears throat> like, the PlayStation was still out. And, you know, they obviously moved on to the PS2 or whatever. But PC gaming really became right. a big thing, and Tommy and I even, and John and your brother, we would all used to go to when they would have PC cafes or cyber worlds or you know just PC zones where you could play. There was all like those, yeah. <laughs> fifty computers hooked up, which were all considered state of the art from whatever you had at home. And yeah, it, yeah. I mean, as far as we knew, like, oh my god, this plays every single game that land we ever wanted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> land party. Basically, a land party at someone else's house, you know, and. Uh, you know, random people are invited. You know? Yeah, we used to go down there and play, you know, it'd be two bucks for an Counter -Strike, hour. Counter Strike, baby. Was it two bucks for an hour? Yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, dude, we played Counter Strike for hours, dude. I wasted so much money there. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember. <laughs> I, remember. I, I got so good at Counter Strike, it was it was kind of like. Scary. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, like, am I going to be able to. Play I know, you would snipe You would snipe guys with pistols, like, you know, you're like, or the AK 47 from like halfway across <laughs> the map, dude. I made adults. Really mad in there because they were like, coming in. I was just a kid. And People in Germany just like, it's iron, it's iron. They would stand up like, who the hell killed me? And I'm just uh, like a kid, just like, eh. <laughs> just like, eh. We're like who, who's John 0150? Oh man, my name was and shout out to yeah. What was your gamer tag? Shout out to Christian Dalton. I went to <laughs> Calvary with him. I know. Uh, him. Oh my gosh, dude, I haven't seen him forever. I hope he's doing okay. Um, I'm sure he is, but. Yeah, we had a little clan. Uh, he pretty much got me into Counter Strike. And fun fact, Counter Strike. I first played it when I went to Lebanon. Really? I didn't. Really crazy. When did you go to Lebanon? I went to Lebanon, August two thousand and one, right before nine eleven, dude. Because if you do, if you guys don't know, John is is half Lebanese and half Italian. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Okay. Uh, and my and maybe some other stuff that I have no idea. I haven't done that. I haven't done that ancestry. One hundred percent amazing. Yeah. You know, oh my gosh. Um, but, the battalion. You know, I mean, we got we From got waist down. Food. Yeah. yeah we, got, we, got, we got like the healthiest food in Lebanon, and then the you know Italy. You know, I mean, we're eating pizza right Pasta now. Pasta and bread. bread. Yeah. Um, so I it first played tough. Counter Strike in Lebanon. I was like, I don't know, I was like in the fifth grade or something. Yeah, uh, it changed your life. Oh my gosh, I was like, yes, and then, <laughs> this is so awesome. And uh, coming back, I brought that with me back to the States, not realizing it was like an up-and-coming thing, and people thought it was so cool, like, oh, you play Counter-Strike? I'm like, yeah, I played You're it. like, you yeah, have a legend, bro. I played it overseas, man. Like, oh, no, of course not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm international. Yeah, international. Yeah, I'm an international player, what the hell? No, and uh, I got really good at it. So Christian Dalton, my first name... Was D oh, I think we had DFA was our clan tag, D Dust, <laughs> and he was Biohazard, and I was Firehazard, and I that, that the dumbest name, and you know, where's kids like yeah, Firehazard, I'm hazardous, I don't know, whatever, it was just <laughs> whatever reason made me cling on to that name. I've had it for like ten years, mm -hmm. on and off. You should change your pot, your uh, Instagram to Firecast. <laughs> Firecast, Firecast? <laughs> I'd be losing those that. kids, dude. I remember the ha the Hazard yeah, gang, dude. It'd be like XXX Hazard. Yeah, like yeah, you know, and so, and then we all started playing yeah. years after that, and we had fun. I remember just biking down there. Yep, uh, lock your bike up. Some kids bike would get stolen kids every would day. Steal, yeah, their bikes. My brother uh, got, I think, a, his tire stolen off his bike. Get a last Yeah, fucking <laughs> uh, 
Uh, right, but right next to Blockbuster, we gotta talk about that for a second. Oh, dude, you go to Carl's Jr. and like load up dude, on we food, would go to Carl's and Jr. then oh just gosh. just play with your greasy fingers all over the keys. That's right. <laughs> You're slipping off. That's right. I remember like before going to Cyberworld, walking to Blockbuster would get like a like a manga, get like a Shonen Jump. I knew this guy who worked at Blockbuster. Were, were you talking about me on the podcast when? Because I, I tried applying for Blockbuster. That was me, right? Because you yep. were You said like Johnny. I wasn't sure. One of the one of the stories we told on a previous podcast was. I was at. Ask your food, at, well, bro. I was sweating <laughs> so bad because of the hot wings. <laughs> it caught me in a bad moment. All right. The meat sweats already. So. We went to a, a Blockbuster right after we were pl- probably at Cyberworld, probably which was Cyber right World. next door. We're like, yeah, go play for a job after some gaming. We spent two bucks on the hour, and we're like, all right, well, what's a good idea? I don't know. Let's go apply for a job. So we go to Blockbuster, and it's one of those things where, you know, you, you would apply right there on the computer. And I remember you filled out the whole thing. I did. The computer I filled, froze. I did. And it, it, was like a, it was like an old school. <laughs> Dude, it was funny because, like. It's a computer sitting there, like, on a desk. Yeah, it was so place. weird. I mean, and this computer was so shitty because yeah. we were all accustomed to several computers. So we go right. back to this. This was like. It was like a Dell 1985. Like it was just so old, and the rear projection was. So, it was just such a deep, old-looking thing. Like you're just like, wow, okay. How long have they had this cased up? Yeah. Now? And it did. And I remember also though, I couldn't get the job because they were like, oh, I fill out everything. Like, oh, you're not 18. Like, no. Oh, well, you can't work here. I'm like, fuck, I couldn't. It's been like a half hour filling this crap out on this danky computer. You're like, I've been playing Oregon Trail on this thing for the last 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I mean, applying. Yeah, yeah the, find the, Minesweeper on it. Yeah, um, good game. The, the but, reason uh, the reason those, those those PC games were so popular was because it was, it was coming from a generation of of us that where it's like you have two players or four players at most, and with at these PC cafes, they you would have for a lot forty more. people. Yeah, all playing twenty yeah. on twenty. Now, of course, it's so online fun. and unlimited. Yeah, but. At that time, that was a major breakthrough. It was crazy. It was like, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. I remember sometimes I didn't feel like going to school. It didn't happen a lot, but... <laughs> Dude, I, I remember, I remember leaving... World. I remember Tommy Sorry, and Mom me and, and Jason and Joseph, we actually did church one time to go oh! to Cyber World, man. Yeah, I remember that. It yeah. was back in, like, I think middle school or yeah. whenever I, that... I'm sure I went with you guys. It was just a thing to do. You can just walk over, like, oh, yeah, we can spend a few hours here when we're supposed to be somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, oh, where have you been? Oh, yeah, we were at, you know, church, and, uh, you know, we uh, decided to stay after. Great kids. sermon. It's the only place we killed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember my mom would ask me, like, oh, well, what did he talk about? And I would just, like, oh, yeah. Same <laughs> story as last week. Yeah. Yeah. Brr, brr. I remember Joseph always <laughs> playing the game Diablo. I'd be like, Diablo. Joseph. Diablo. I'll be like, Joseph, you know Diablo means devil, right? And he's oh, like, this oh. Is so funny. <laughs> Diablo. Dude, Jason and I have gotten kicked out of church at least twice. And you guys went to Cyber World? <laughs> just talking and laughing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, be, and being, just being uh, stupid, disruptive. Spit, yeah. Shooting spitballs or something yeah. dumb. I don't Cal- remember. Yeah, that's funny. Kitchen counter. But you guys need to leave. Kitchen, All right. Kitchen counter. We're going to go yeah, uh, that, eat that, across that the street. That was my dad's joke. Like, kitchen he, counter. He, he was like, we, we kept talking about playing Counter Strike. And uh, we were all in the car, and he's like, he's like trying to talk, and we wouldn't, we wouldn't be quiet. You're in the kitchen. Kind of, he's you're like, kitchen. I haven't enough of, I've had enough of this kitchen counter strike or whatever you're so talking about. Because counter like counter is in the name, yeah. he calls it kitchen counter, and there's that yeah, dude, to he, it. that's a real story, man. It's real <laughs> shit. He knows dude, kitchen. your dad's amazing. Uh, I miss him so much. I haven't seen him in a while. He's listening. The, yeah, just hang out. Love you, Tom. <laughs> just hang out here long enough. He'll show up. No, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm just here to spray the weeds. So yeah, shout out, Dad. I love you. Love oh, dad. Yeah, no, no. You, okay, just look. Quick thing about your dad. Your dad was was such a mentor to me, and I'm sure to a lot of others. And you know, just supposed to say that. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Love you, Tom. Yeah, he's for the sure. Best. And, that, and that's because yeah. uh, for that for those of you that don't know, John and I and Tommy, we were all a part of the same Boy Scout troop growing up. It was a, a troop that our dad was the leader of the of the troop. Yeah. And uh, you know, whereas some Scout troops are known for, you know, you walk to Granny across the street, or you have all you do is fundraisers. We did fundraisers. But we used that money to go camping at least oh once gosh. a month. We would was, go camping all the time. It know? was so fun. And uh, I know that if I don't bring it up, one of you guys will. My first, you guys remember my first camp outing with you guys? Was it Catalina? No. That's for your drink, brother. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's loud. Yeah, I know. I, okay, thanks. This table's loud. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, no, we'll talk about it later. Uh, do you guys remember? <laughs> Come on. I, I almost don't want to say it. I'm almost no, like, tell us. I thought it was Catalina. Cooler. Cooler. I wasn't there for that. You, yeah, you were. No, no. But I, I, I heard I the don't. stories when you guys got back. That none of you guys were there. It was just me and everyone else. Like, yeah. Like, well, where was it? Where was uh, it? Joshua Tree. 
All I heard was I've been in Joshua Tree a hundred times. No, you were so. there. You guys, you guys were there. Maybe uh, that sounds my familiar. First, that it was sounds... my first trip. Yeah, that so was, you guys had to have that been was there. a big thing in our troop. Was yeah, because like, you, I guess, were in your tent and you might have heard a shuffle outside your tent, and all of a sudden there's a cougar. You said cougar because there's I, a cougar I heard by my tent. Dude, there's no cougars around here. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, okay, I'll, I'll tell this. It's super, a black panther. Super. <laughs> Twenty eighteen. That's hilarious. No, um. No, so I was tenting up with Justin. It's a nice watch, by the way. Thank you. Actually, my dad gave it to me. Shout out to Joe. Habibi. Yeah, <laughs> he's great. No, it's a great watch. It actually charges on incandescent and fluorescent lighting. Nice. That's what it is. Sorry, it's, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's fine, because uh, this story is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> uh, so um, I was t- camping with Justin, and uh, I heard rustling, and my, you know, I didn't, this is my first camp outing. I didn't know that the, the dynamics of tents would come in, at, like with the wind, and it would look like someone was pressing in. And uh, honestly, I thought, oh my god, like what the hell is that? And I heard growling, which I now reminiscing as probably just adults. Snoring. It was probably my dad yeah. snoring. It was probably someone <laughs> or snoring. Or Justin's stomach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because Justin was a he was a big guy. He was, he was a big guy. Super yeah. super cool. Him and his yeah. you know his whole family and especially his his dad Charlie. Oh Charlie man. Who, who uh, um, rest in peace because he actually he just, just passed away. He just passed it? away uh, a couple oh, months ago. We found out. Yeah. And listen, Charlie uh, was oh a major gosh. huge ma- mentor. Huge mentor. We absolutely loved Charlie so much. Oh, Sorry, no. John didn't know. Sorry, I didn't know. Uh, I, I, no, I had no idea. Uh, but Charlie was somebody that we all looked up to. Who really, uh, you know, whenever we would have drives up to a camp, uh, all the kids wanted to ride in Charlie's car because Charlie played a lot of the classic, all the great classic rock. And I think a lot of us that got into all the great bands like ACDC or Dawkins or Scorpions, that's all because of Charlie. And Charlie was a man of God also. So, you know, he was also a great mentor, but he was also, you know, a great friend and just somebody somebody super cool. My, my My first concert I saw was the Eagles and it was with Justin and his dad. So I have nothing but great things to say, and uh, you know, so, well, fortunately, will be I know for sure we'll be able to see him again someday. But um, my fa- my 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 memory of of Johnny, uh, you know, my first camp out I think w- with you was I remember we were in Catalina, and oh, that uh, was the best ever. It was when we almost it was down fun. the island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh wait, was that it? Was that Black it, Jack? That or, was, or a little harbor. That was blackjack. That was blackjack. Oh yeah, no, no. The huge log. The huge log. <laughs> yeah. We're like, oh, let's just bring. Let's this light this half a freaking century old have, log. Yeah, that's twice as big as a fire pit. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that was so funny. It took like an hour to light. All well, the adults were just watching us too. Yeah. They're like, and they came running over when that thing finally lit. Because <laughs> there was about that thing burst into like flame. There was about ten or. 15 of us that took, that of us boys, that yeah. to move a Dance giant Dancing around like, hey, yo, what, yo, hey, yo, yeah, what, it, was uh, probably, uh, it was probably a thousand pound piece of wood, dude. Yeah, it was heavy. Maybe not a thousand, like 999, but up there for sure. Oh, my gosh. The, the interesting, <laughs> I, I weighed it, man. All right. The interesting thing about that weekend was that it was what was the only time that we went to Catalina that it was labeled as a survival week. Where the yeah. the parents or the mentors and the scout leaders weren't supposed to talk to the kids, so that's why they oh, hesitated. Is that why? They hesitated to come over there and stop us because we're, we're like, over there, Lord of the Flies. Yeah. Dude, Do you talking. remember when they told us to put it out? Yeah, yeah. They're yeah, like, yeah. everybody yeah. pee on it, and then they immediately stopped. Is that what happened? Yeah. yeah. Everyone pee on it. And John yeah. Jim shot like a huge stream all yeah, the way across yeah, yeah. the fucking <laughs> <laughs> Like, Jesus Christ, bro! How are you doing that? Is that a squirt gun? <laughs> that, oh. that was also the only year I think that the whole thing. Was uh, was filmed. So since this was gonna be a survival week, uh, one of the the somebody who had already became an Eagle Scout, which is like the highest ranking scouts. His Brian, name was Brian. Yeah. He brought his camera, and it shows basically he made a video out of it of capturing us doing all this like you know crazy like course like compass course or survival cooking and stuff like that. And there was one day it was raining really hard, dude. It was, this was in a blackjack. Blackjack, yeah. and there's footage, dude, of like when you, because at that time you had your huge Afro puff, dude, and it was all oh inside of, uh, oh, that's it, was, right. it was inside of your parka, or your, uh, parka, or what do you call it, the, uh, parka? Parka is what a wind, not a windbreaker, but a, uh, no, poncho, 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 yeah, 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 because yeah. yeah, we did that hike, um, in the rain, I remember I had this, uh, yeah, this clear poncho. You had a clear poncho, dude, yeah. and your fro was taking it, it made your my, head look so big. Yeah, my, my fro was like, <laughs> filling it in, and like, 
protruding out and acting as like, like a little a, visor, like a little yeah. visor, <laughs> like, like a palm tree visor, just soaking up the water, man. That's great. Oh, now that hair has just fun. kind of migrated to your beard. So it's your literally reincarnated into my beard. How long have you been growing that beard, man? Oh, dude, let me see. Well, I've been trimming it every now and then, but I think Looks since uh, November, no shave November, I haven't really touched it. Yeah. November. Okay. November. Yeah, because you told me when you came here, like, yeah, I'm trying to catch up to Giorgio, and Giorgio, I was who I saw the other day, has his grow uh, for a he, year. Yeah. Shout out to Giorgio. Uh, we'll talk about you a little more later, but uh, no, no, we, we talked about. Dude, him like, I think it looks sick when you have a beard, but then like the sides <laughs> of the hair are like short. Always, you gotta keep then, it clean. You know what I mean? And I'm overdue for a cut. You guys can't see it. You guys listening out there, but I'm overdue. These guys are being modest. Yeah. I... <laughs> No, I'm overdue. Um, and modest too. But uh, and modest too. No, but um, yeah, Giorgio. No, the reason I saw like I don't know in one of uh, like a video online of you, you guys all hanging out, and maybe some Instagram stories. Like, Holy crap, Giorgio's beard! Yeah, like, he used Gandalf, to be clean shaven, and he, he yeah. could easily fit into a fantasy. You shall network. not. Yeah. Pass. <laughs> yeah, and now he just looks like a transient. How huh, this beard growing out like that? <laughs> Cargo shorts. I'm just kidding, Giorgio. Uh, God bless you. No, uh, so um. Whoa, okay, what were we talking about? Catalina. Oh, man, let's sidetrack a little bit. It's, uh, it's oh, right. Right. Yeah. your hair, your poncho. Hair, yeah, hair. Um, you know, it's funny. As long as my hair has ever gone, I've never actually had any problems with it, like, being caught on fire or anything. Or just, well, yeah, know, especially like Michael Jackson <laughs> in the Pepsi commercial. Oh, my gosh. My hair's on fire. So Johnny brought his Johnny brought his guitar with him today, which I actually kind of want to – I wrote down a lot of questions about – you know, because you were always in a different band when I was growing up, and yeah. I had the opportunity to film some of your guys' work when you guys were recording, like at the bomb shelter oh, with dude. Eugene Pereira. Some of the best times. The, the best, some of the best times. What's chain the, reaction? The first I... show, though, I want to say the first show that I ever watched you play was uh, Joseph and I. We went out and saw you play at Ho- oh, Hoagie Bar Mike, Michaels. and you were playing oh. with a band called the Jakes, which is now Young the Giant. Yeah, I right? opened up for Young the Giant in a sense, a younger Young the yeah, Giant. Yeah, dude. Um, that was so much fun because they were so cool. So what happened was, yeah, Mitchell and Joseph were there. It was a great show. It was back when I was so young that they had to mark our uh, hands with X's so we couldn't yeah. go get alcohol. Yeah, how old um, were, you, were you guys probably? Holy crap. I must have been 15 or 16. Dang. And who and, was in uh, that band? It was, uh, shout out to Romel, Rafi, uh, right, yeah, Flores, dude. His, and his two brothers. And he'll probably hear it because I know he listens to the podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love that guy. <laughs> I, with, you know, actually, because I, I was just talking to him about our trip that you know you and I are planning as yeah. well. Uh, we're all part of it, and Romel will be going. We're going to Laughlin. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We, we just lay out and just, you know, we'll go about that later, but uh, more about that later. That'll be but, another podcast. <laughs> yeah, that, that will be another podcast, especially afterwards. Um, but, so, uh, also, uh, so it was Ryan Flores... Raven Flores. Ryan Flores. Was Raven playing at that time? Because he must have been really playing. young. Because even when you guys were in... Bro. He was playing at nine years old. He's he playing was, with us. Yeah, he must have been really young. Because yeah. he's the youngest of all the brothers. <clears throat> yeah, he's he's in there right now. Twenty. He was like... I think he's 24, uh-huh. 25. And I miss that guy. I haven't seen him in a while. But yeah, he was like nine, ten, when he was playing live shows in front of people. Like He was a yeah. drum prodigy. Yeah, he was very and he's good. still a very good musician to this day. He's kind of moved on to a lot of different instruments. But it was him, Ryan Flores, who is, was, I mean... One of the most talented. He's the reason why I'm playing guitar. Right. He's the reason why. Ryan I, is very, Ryan, very good. Ryan Flores is the kind of guy that can bust out John Mayer like with his eyes closed. Like he, yeah. You know, he, he'll just bust out. He was in that. So he was a guitarist was, with you. He was a guitarist. Uh, oh yeah, it was him. And I think that first show. I think we also had Ruben. Okay. I want to. I want to say we had Ruben Bahaman, also a great friend. Uh, yeah, super while. cool. And yeah, we opened up for the Jakes. And when we opened up, it was such a good show for us because by this time, were you there when we went and actually watched Young the Giant at the uh, Orange, yeah. County, Orange County Fair? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. No, it was crazy. It's funny because I saw them before that at uh, a club in Hollywood called uh, Moscow. I'm sure you guys remember Moscow Wednesdays. Or any of you guys out there uh, who were 18? Is it ran by a Russian mafia? Uh, it is Moscow. It's funny, you know. It was it was like the weird scene club, you know, for all those. It's uh, really dark, right? Out there. It was it was a really cool spot, really kind of gothic. You kind of walked in. There's like all this cool architecture that you felt like. What's that like place Romania. called? It's like the movie Triple X. Um, so on Wednesdays it was called Moscow Wednesdays, and I know on Saturdays it was a different club uh, called Bar Sinister. Which Moscow also... Meal for you, John. Dude, Moscow Meal. Dude, I, I, I've, I, I heard that of the Bar Sinister and how it was like. Mm-hmm. There's like. <laughs> Like like tor- sex torture and stuff. Weird. Uh, sex I, I've actually never I've never been a bar yeah. sinister. Is that only on Wednesdays, dude? Yeah. Uh, something weird like no, that. So so Wednesdays uh, was an eighteen and up club called Moscow, and so we went 
a lot, and I forgot why I was bringing this up, uh, because of, oh, Young the Giant, yeah, I right? saw them play there, and I'm like, I recognize you guys, this is a long time ago, I must have been like 18, 19. For maybe three or four years after we opened up for them, which they were so nice, by the way. They were, they gave us huge words of encouragement back then. Shout out to yeah. the Giant. Um, they kept us going, and they, they're still know. playing, right? Oh, dude, yeah, they're amazing. No, they're, we they're when great. we when we went and saw them, I think in maybe twenty thirteen or fourteen at the fair, and this was of course way after you played with them when they were the Jakes. Yeah, no, but so really quick before that, I saw them at Moscow Wednesday, and I recognized okay. them, and I'm like. Aren't you guys the the Jakes? Like, no, yeah, yeah we're, <laughs> we're Young the Giant now. I'm like, holy wow. crap! We opened up for you guys in Hoagie Bar. Michael's like, oh yeah, back when we were all wearing because ties. They, they, they all looked wore, like the Killers, they dude. All, yeah, they all wore the same uh, suit and ties. That's cool. And they were like, oh yeah, dude. They were crap. really good, dude. And it's funny because he almost didn't recognize me until I told him my band name yeah. at the time. Because you remember that band name, A Glorious Midnight Sky. <laughs> I got them all written down. Yeah, well, really? Right. The we Glorious hold, Midnight wait, Sky. Uh, Glorious Midnight Sky, we hold today Shotgun Symphony, Abstract Perfection, Come Back Alive, and the Taylor Collins Band. Holy are How do you guys all, come up with those names? Are those all correct? That's a long story in itself. And that's a, those are all the band names I can remember as you were growing those, up. Those we'll go through all of them. But yeah. no, those are all the important ones. But that first one was the no. Glorious Midnight Sky. Yeah. Right? Oh my gosh! So then he's like, "Yeah, I remember you guys." No. You guys had a really uh, cool song though. He's like, "You guys I sucked." I'm just kidding. <laughs> what was this? The, was it "Glorious Midnight Sky"? There was a really catchy song. I remember when you guys first started playing. It was like, "Pass me the something, dear." Let's uh, toast to another. No, that's what? that was Ghost Ship Armada, dude. Oh, that was it wasn't, I didn't even. What? How does that, that was song go? Rocky. Um, oh, jeez. Break out the, the glasses, glasses, dear. dear. Let's toast to another... Something like that. I don't yeah, know. dude, that song down. was tight, dude. That song was really yeah. cool. And Rocky yeah. was, Rocky's dope, dude. Yeah, that, yeah. That guy's and awesome. He, so he was the yeah. lead singer in a lot of your early bands, right? So, Aside of Mason. Yeah, so basically, it reminded me of the list again. So, we had, <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah. But, Glorious Midnight Sky, Rafi did vocals. Okay. Uh, and So Rafi Flores. The Glorious Midnight Sky. Did, and that was the one that where Johnny played the with, the, with the Jakes. And then which yeah. which band were you in after that? Um, You have the list right there. Wait, how, how long, <laughs> wait, how long were you in Glorious Midnight Sky, first of all? Oh, God. I, start, I remember we did our first press kit. We really <laughs> tried. Back. I was 14. Thank you. I was 14 um, to like maybe 8, 17. Uh-huh. Maybe so. This and was like three years, probably. I really don't. It was remember. high school, right? Or you guys were uh, yeah, were you guys releasing show. music on on you, MySpace at the time? Yeah, oh, I think this might have been pre MySpace. No, I think if it was pre MySpace, we didn't get big on MySpace, but we had a MySpace. Yeah, we had a MySpace, and um, we had oh, shirts. MySpace, dog. We had a cool friend who did shirts for us back in the day. You know, I was yeah. Four, you guys had some really cool shirts. I was fourteen yeah. when we started, and so we had shirts. We had we printed out albums. We were we self recorded ourselves. Yeah, but at your high so. school and around and your local group, like your uh, local friends, you guys were were, were a big deal. Because I, mean, I remember that. Remember the video of you at Belfort High and the, everyone's going crazy. That was know? we'll see. That was that's that was later on because my first show at, as Glorious Midnight Sky. Chain reaction. We had to sell a hundred tickets. Uh-huh. God, it was awful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Welcome uh, to club promoting. Pay, uh, shout out, <laughs> shout out to Garrett at Breakthrough Productions. Garrett pay to was play, the one who huh? got us. Yeah, pay to play. And we we, we tried to sell a hundred tickets. I think we got to like seventy or something. And he's that's like, still pretty good. He's like, and it was funny because he, he, I remember he sat outside with us and talked with us, mentoring us. Like, you know, it's okay, guys. You know, I understand. Blah blah. You guys tried your best. Your very first show. He hooked it up. We played with a band called Inverse. I don't know what they're doing now, but I was in ninth grade, and it was the worst show I ever played. <laughs> Inverse. Yeah, well, Inverse was a great band, but we packed. Chain Reaction was packed. It was a Saturday night. Well, the place holds friends. ten people. Yeah, yeah, no, first, yeah it was very small. <laughs> There's all nine of us in there. <laughs> but, I mean, no, there were there was, was def- a, I definitely dude, to a few chain, yeah. of your chain shows. Being a musician these days, or trying to be a DJ or anything like that, it's hard because you also have to be a promoter too. You have to have yeah. a, a large network of people or like no yeah. people. Or even be able to sell tickets for the whole band. Yeah, so back then, That's, you know, being in big, high school, dude. 14, being in yeah. high school, you're like, you know, like, uh, I can go to my church. And yeah. but, but the thing is, so when you're young, like, I went to Bellflower <laughs> High, and so I, um, that place, you know, was a lot of, I made a lot of friends over there, and so I just was like, please, everyone come to my show. And yeah. we packed the house, and, um, and it was the worst show ever. I remember, so half the set, <laughs> half the set, I didn't have... My my guitar plugged all the way in, so I was so, <laughs> I was so nervous. We were I at, had, we're like, is that the one where you played out of tune? Is that no, right? that's at, that's a funny story. I don't even too. want to talk about that. But sure, <laughs> we, we can talk about that. This is in a roast fest. That was with Abstract Perfection, but um, I had my yes, guitar barely plugged in, 
and so it wasn't connected all the way. I didn't know. I'm like setting up. Oh, plug it in. I didn't really feel <laughs> it out. And so I, you know, this is when um, you weren't getting. I had forward. my hair straightened at this time. Oh yeah. And like I remember people. Oh yeah, cool hair. And I don't know if they were fuck with me. Or not. I was just so nervous. It, I, it did not matter. So I'm on stage, and I'm like, doesn't sound like anything's happening. So I'm trying to put all my volumes up. You know, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> and I look at my the and court. I just turn around. Like half the set goes by. And I turn around. And there's nothing. Like the cable, I noticed, I see like the shining metal part <laughs> in between in the, like, break the, room. The, the casing, you know, and I'm like, funny, and dude. I'm like, oh no. So I plug it in, but as soon as I plug it in, <laughs> what happens? I have all my volume knobs turned all the oh. way up. So it just goes, <laughs> and I'm like, ah, and I'm freaking out because it's just so, so noticeable. <laughs> Yeah, and, awesome. And dude. then I try lowering it, and then so I was just a just a. Your band lights are like, God <laughs> damn it, dude, John! Honestly, I fucked up <laughs> so bad. How could they uh, have not done your ninth grade? Who cares? I know, but dude, I was gonna. I thought I was gonna die at that moment because first show, everyone you know is there, make That's it or break true. it. Were they laughing? Um, no. <laughs> uh, or if they were, I turned out completely just. Dude, I, just, dude, I, I, just, I would pay a hundred dollars to have footage of that night, dude. <laughs> Just there is turning footage around of that and, night. If there was like a spark that flew out of it. There's footage of that night. I got it. We got to ask. I think Ramel has it. We can talk uh, about we gotta, it. Ramel, that 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 awesome. We got to yeah. put that. We, I, dude, we have to put that on our Or it might have been a different show. It might have been uh, like Shout a Shout out show. to the Filipino, yeah, Filipino man. community. Yeah, I, grew, I grew up with those guys. I love them. He posts the funniest memes, dude. Dude, he's, he's fucking hilarious. He's the funniest, he dude. He is. Like, I'm so excited to be going to Laughlin with him because it's been, we usually do a trip every year, Cinco de Mayo. Uh, Mason, we Vegas, yeah, Mason. Shout I'll be in Mason. Thailand on the May fifth. Ooh, ooh, which you know, you'll be, yeah, you'll be, yeah, it'll be one Mexican. <laughs> hey, all right, dude. The, the one funny, photo, one of the funny. Where are you from? L.A. <laughs> <Orale. Dale. laughs> one of the funny pictures, dude. I have from one of those years that we all went to. I think it was a bit one of the years we went to Vegas with Mason and Rafi and you. Oh. It was when we saw that Michael Jackson show, <laughs> and that was afterward. That was one of our later we paid. Trips. We all pitched in to buy the photo, dude. Oh a professional God. photo. You guys have had such different experience in Vegas than I have. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, because uh, uh, yeah, Michael Jackson. We had our Vegas, our Vegas experiences were like. I'm like I was on a rooftop, and there's there. We yeah. all stop right there. No, 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 no. It's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it stays in Vegas. He doesn't right? remember the rest. It stays, it stays in Vegas. No, it's funny. I actually have written down like you and I like to talk about you and I being drunk in Vegas. The first time mm-hmm. it was just me. It was actually Johnny Dewar um, and Jack and Jack, and there, right. that was it. Right? It was just yeah. us. Oh crap! Now, now that I remember more of the story, <laughs> the more I don't want to talk about it. Because yeah, you know, I, 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 I know. I know. I know. I don't remember now because of uh, I had a bad time. I I had a I, was, I had a bad time too. Yeah. And listen, Johnny called me and he's like. Hey, is it, I'm going to talk about this time you were in Vegas and you drank a lot. And he had posted something on Facebook where I, I was so embarrassed. I was so humiliated yeah. by, by John's post. And I, well, tell and us it what a, it is. It was a picture of me laying on a bed face down and it says, <laughs> he can't hang. <laughs> I was probably 23. And then John and I were walking around. 22. And it was so beautiful. Because I was so was, mad, dude. I dude, was so mad. I didn't it want was to talk snowing. To we, John and I, John Dewar walking out. It was snowing. Oh, right? Dewar was there. Yeah. yeah, Dewar, yeah. And so Who I posted found, that, Mitch? I Donnie posted, posted it, dude. Posted it. Oh, I was humiliated. Uh, when yeah, I, when I finally a, woke <laughs> up. We had to talk about that. Yeah, because, and I pissed him off so bad. I somehow had, like, I had, like, you know, I was drinking probably the whole time I was there. Well, it's sun up, sun down. I was just always drinking, and I, <laughs> and uh, you know, Jack was uh, her Vegas, then, dude. right? Bro, this is the funniest right? thing, part of that trip was uh, you were drinking so much that you only had enough money f- left that night to get, pay for gas the next day. You gambled away all your gas money, <laughs> and then you went back. Typical to, Vegas room. You came back to the room that night. And then Jack was like checking your levels because you had an anxiety attack about all the no, money no, no, you no. spent. I, I didn't. No, I didn't. Have, I had an anxiety attack because I. It, you did. I, I didn't, uh-huh. didn't care about money. I yeah, was yeah, my yeah. best friends. You know, right, I knew right. like there's no big deal. Yeah. But I didn't because I just started feeling like shit, and I'm realized. And I, you know, we were so young. Yeah. I didn't realize. Like I think it was the first time. I'm like, oh my god, I put my body through hell, drinking, yeah. smoking, everything. For like forty eight hours straight, my yeah. body's like, dude, calm the hell down. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. know what my body was doing. And I'm like, oh god, I'm having an anxiety attack. Yeah. So I was freaking out, and then uh, you know, freaking out. Jack, being a, he was a paramedic then. Right? He was che- he was taking your pulse. He was and checking stuff. my pulse to make sure. Which shout out to Jack, I miss that dude. That was um, a that was a great a great trip though he, overall. No, it was, and it was a learning experience in a lot of ways. But the funny thing was, at that time, and I want to say this, uh, 
you know, because you did have an anxiety attack. Uh, yeah. I, at that time, I was we we thought that was funny, and I remember it was probably a yeah. year or two after an a year or two. Oh, we're terrible. like, oh, John's having an anxiety attack. I remember two years after that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I had an anxiety attack, and I called you because I knew yeah. you had dealt with it. And your I, I I pick up the phone. This is your first one, right? Dude, I even yeah. think you called me that day. And I didn't call you. And you're like, hey, are you? All, is everything all good? I don't know how. And I don't know why. It, yeah. You called me. And uh-huh. I was like, actually, no, dude. I'm like, yeah. I, I had a real, I was so stressed out between work and school because I was yeah. taking six classes. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, dude, just come over. Yeah. And so I went I over there. That. Ryan had, was getting ready to finish school for psychology. Mm-hmm. And then you were just like, it was like, I was like, you're, you're like, how do you feel? And I was like, dude, I have a weird tightness in my chest. Yeah. It feels like a sharp uh, and I was like, I don't know if it, I'm having a heart attack or uh, it's very anxiety physical. and stress. You feel, you feel like they kind of become tangible within yourself. And so it's Dude, very it scary. was bad, yeah. It's like something trying to pull you to the ground. Dude, it yeah. was, yeah. It's awful. And By I, your heart. And you're like, what yeah. the hell is happening? And it lasted probably a month, um, oh, a couple weeks. The, the first a couple one weeks. is the strongest one. It was so the, the strongest first, one. But then you realize, oh, your body just does this. Yeah, dude. And, and it's absolutely real. It's you know. it, it's the worst feeling I've ever had. And yeah. But I re- do remember... You know, when we were when I went over there and we were laughing, and it it did temporarily take it away. You know, what I mean, it did temporarily. Of course, yeah. But remember how I was talking about it? So I was in an accident. I had my first real crazy anxiety attack when I was in an accident in high school, and so it affected me even going to school. Yeah. And I had a uh, dude. You guys might have went to him. There was a chiropractor in Bellflower. <laughs> right next to the lens place that was there, you guys are crafters. Yeah, right next to the right next to actually the same park. Yeah, the that's where we used to get our ice. <laughs> we used to get our ice there, bro. The, 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 there was a chiropractor there who I yeah, think yeah. Anita told my mom about, and then therefore, so because I went to get readjusted because you know I had whiplash and everything, and uh, I was having anxiety. And every time I was on the road, I would think cars were going to come hit us because it was a hit and run on Christmas. It was Jesus, up. yeah, it was bad. And uh, he told me in Akron, I'll never forget, and I keep. You know, I tell friends this every time maybe they're going through something hard. He broke down fear in an acronym. He said, fear, you know, F-E-A-R. You know, it's false evidence appearing real. real. Remember I told you that? Yeah, because, Uh, but you uh, told me that before. No, no, no. And then I heard it in a movie later on. Keep going, keep going. No, yeah, so no, I told you that. I told you that. I'm pretty sure that that was the advice that was part of uh, what I was telling you when you came over when you were having your first anxiety attack. For sure. Because that helped me a lot. Because because going through it for the first time, we are so used to feeling invincible, you know, because we're so young, we have all the energy in the world, blah, blah, blah. But when we finally put ourselves to that limit, we're finally, you know, coming into adulthood, realizing, oh, my God, our bodies actually feel yeah. what, what we put into them. And so, <laughs> it, it, you know, so getting used to that, Bones processing break. that. Yeah. yeah. So that helped me a lot when you didn't really know how else to process it because you have no point of reference. You're just right. like, oh, this is the first time I'm feeling like shit. Yeah. And so I remember, yeah, you came over... And uh, I didn't talk to you about it, but did you? So when how you did had, that make you feel, Mitch? When yeah. he, when he kind of comforted you when you were? Oh yeah, it was just like it was weird. Like I said, because he called me that day, and I it was like the the peak of and for something he called and he just says, "Hey, is everything all right?" Maybe it was because the way I said hello, I don't know. Or but, maybe it was because I heard from you in a while or something, and I'm like, yeah. and I was like, "Hey, what's going on?" It's like, yeah, and I was like, dude, dude I, I'm like not in the right place right now. So you're like, dude, come by. And so, like, if you don't know, I live super close to John. They used to say I could shoot a spitball to his yeah, house because yeah, it was that hey, I ran. like a booger. <laughs> like a booger to your house. Side note, I ran around the block today. And you ran so far away. And I, it took me exactly two minutes to run from here to your, your parents' house. Wow. So All right. So let's so continue. Yeah. Yeah. Cool story. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I saw that on your Instagram story. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, um, first time that happens, anxiety, uh, for me at least. That was my story. And, yeah. We, uh, got Dude, you want to hear about my first time in Vegas? Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just left the mood here. Uh, so my first experience in Vegas, I was completely broke too, like you guys. Yeah. Like I didn't have a lot of money. I think I brought like four hundred dollars to Vegas. Yeah. And I was like living like check in to check. Monopoly money. Yeah, in Monopoly money. Yeah. And uh, I went with my promotions group, and it was just like the first baller trip I've ever been on. Well, you guys don't know, Tommy Iron is was just, he worked at, for a promotion company for a long time. If you ever want to get into some cool club, he was the guy to help you do it. He was the guy that set up party buses for all you and your friends back when it was so cool and such a cool thing to do. And I actually have that written down about something I want to talk about when you and I shared our birthday oh, yeah. for a while. But anyway, I'll let you finish. Yeah, yeah, I want to hear the biggest So story. I was pretty broke, dude, and I got to sleep on someone's floor. But it was at the, uh, it was at the Hardwood Suites, which is in the, uh, which is... Oh, it's right there, dog. Where's the wings at? Oh, the wings are in the bathroom. The wings are in the wings bathroom. Wings are in the bathroom. Funny, they're going to end Sorry, up there later. I was going to put it in the kitchen. 
So I was, I was on this bad trip, dude, in yeah. uh, in a good way, and uh, we stayed in a ten thousand dollar a night suite. What? It, the, yeah, the first, the wait, this first, first time, time in I Vegas. ever went to Vegas. Oh, dude, dude this is bad because then you can't top that. I know, yeah. right? Yeah. Anyway, so it was ten G's a night, at the, and the room was comped. And you can look it up on uh, the Palms. It was the Palms. The Palms okay. uh, on their website. It was the Hardwood Suites, and it was basically. Uh, when you go into the room, there's a half court basketball court in the room. What the hell? And there's like uh, there's like pull out beds on the on the uh, uh, thank you. There's pull out beds uh, that are on the uh, the sides of the court where they kind of pull down. You could sleep on the court. Uh, there was it was a two story. Sleep on the court? Yeah, you can sleep on the court. Like oh, the sixth Bro, room. Bro, check this out. There is a uh, there is a sign in the back of the court uh, where all of the celebrities who have ever stayed in this room they, sign. They sign it. Yeah. There? Oh Damn. my god. The one that stood out to me with it said, "If you can't get laid in this room, dot dot dot, George Clooney." I was what? like, "What? <laughs> get out of here. George was here. George, my boy, George." <laughs> boy George, boy, boy George. Not, not boy George. Uh, I'm kidding. Sorry, George. But dude, that was so Your cool. Greatness, yeah. And uh, anyways, that night I I, you you know, got I was buying drinks. No, I was with my girl at the time. Or, oh, I, right? I, I was with Ivy, but there's just she, no good way to end wasn't the story there. now. No, no, no. So so here's the deal, dude. I was completely almost out of money. I mean, I might have had like fifty dollars to take home, and I was just kind of bumming, you know. You started flicking those the cards. last night there, I was like, I'm gonna go gamble. I'm okay. just going to go try it. I'm going to play $20. That's all I have to play with. What was your first game? And it was roulette. Yes. Oh, my God. I didn't mean to sound this is when I beca- This is when I became a really <laughs> subject to that game. Dude, roulette, man. I had... There was there was nobody in the casino. And I walked up to a roulette table, and I asked the guy. I was like, hey, man, this is my first time. No one in the casino? There was people in there. But it was like There wasn't not... anybody on this table. Oh, okay, okay. Right, sorry. Oh, uh, like, but it was late at night. Oh. It was late at night. Oh. That, like that doesn't like big difference. Vegas doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. What I remember in my head, there wasn't like a lot of people in the casino at the time, <laughs> and uh, I walked up to this table and I was like, "Hey, man, I heard a lot of people like this game. I saw people in here earlier. <laughs> nice. Can you can you just tell me like how to play?" Mm. And he's just like, "Yeah, absolutely." He's like from New York. He's like, <laughs> "Yeah, you put your black ones over here. Does does a double if you hit the black, and then ah, forget you, about it." You yeah, know? yeah, and then it's uh, green, go home. <laughs> so so I started playing just colors. Right, black, yeah. red. That's black. how you do it. I yeah. started on black, colors. and I put a five. It was a five dollar minimum, and I put a five dollars on, on black. Yeah. If it hit black, it, you know you won double. If it hits red, you lose your money. Yeah. So I'm just playing conservatively. Of course. And you had 20 bucks long left. story short, I start winning, Good. winning, yeah. winning, winning. And I'm the type of person I'll I'll play until I lose, and when I lose, I stop. Loser. <laughs> or I would like to double well, my money. What do you mean? Play Here's the deal, lose. dude. Yeah, I ended up I ended up playing that night. We got to go lose all your money. You can't play yeah, anymore. Right. Wait right. till you hear about well, our Morongo nights. Roll, dude. Oh, well, I would play until I lose my initial bet. <laughs> yeah. So oh, 20, oh, I see. Right? Okay, so you or double it, 20. and quit. That's yeah. So that's just the, how I do it, and yeah. then um, so you should do it. I know. ended up winning, dude, seven hundred dollars on the same roulette yeah. table. Same roulette table. Wow. Can, yeah. I just, can we high five really quick, dude? Let I, that be I was so freaking excited going home, dude. That's like I was so yeah. pumped, bro. Like and you lost the because I came with four and leave with seven on a freaking razor. And then everything paid and for. And I had already. a dope room. Everything was paid for. I so, was so on they got cloud you, man. nine, bro. They got you because there's no there's no better feeling. They're like, <laughs> wait till <laughs> next. Time. Yeah, they're like, oh. we're gonna rape you, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. dude I, I remember, I remember my, my first time to Vegas, and Tommy is like, "Hey, you need to come over to my house, and we need to talk before you go to Vegas." So it's gonna be me and Jack. I had a system, and it was uh, Johnny and, and Josh. And he put, Tommy busts out this sheet of paper that says Tommy Einan's roulette system, and so there was like, no, no, I pulled out. An you app had they yeah. had the game on it. I was showing you how I win, no. and you're like, you were uh, convinced. Because remember I had the whole thing on my iPhone, and dude, I go, you play this one, this one, this yeah, one. Yeah, okay, but let me tell the and story, And then you dude. wrote that down. Okay, so <laughs> I, I wrote down Tommy Annan's roulette system. Yeah. And then I'm in Vegas, and... I, and let me tell you the, my no, system. No, 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 Let me, no, let me no, tell no, the story. All right, all right, all right, and so Tommy's like, he was only like, you're creating like these... What, well, look, so if you're playing numbers, look, and it, it, if Tommy got lucky on these numbers before, that's great. But he basically, it looks like <laughs> these like really... Uh, patterned pyramids, kind of like on the roulette board, and so the first that's one. That's exactly how I do it. And so Tommy I play black, 
I play the sorry, wait, one wait, that wait, goes wait. down the middle, and then I play the second and third in the middle. Okay, wait. I'll, yeah, sorry, yeah. I didn't hear your story. All right, I'm I gonna finish hear, this. Are you doing? So I lose. I lose the first time I play on roulette, but that's fine. And I'm texting Tommy. He's like walking me through this. He's like, oh wait. All right, now shift the bottom three all, all one number and I shift the top this. three like one left. And I'm like, I lost, <laughs> and then I lost like another it's like, like I was playing like, I was playing like before you realize how to play those games where you're using the. Were 25. you playing video roulette or were you playing? There's a real thing, and so uh, so okay. before it's before where you can put like a twenty five cent chip or like a dollar. I was putting one dollar on all these numbers, and then oh, I was like, and then I lost all that. And then I was like, Tommy, that one he didn't work either. He for the $5 yeah. he lost. And you were <laughs> What the <laughs> hell, Tommy? You <laughs> said these would hit. So I would win money. To- and, and at that time, you so were 24. 13. Now that I think about it, I was 21. You must have been 23 or 24. Wow, no. I wasn't even old. The second time I, I, I text Tommy again, I take a picture of them taking my chips or something. I'm like, hey, I just lost again. <laughs> and Tommy's like, all right, I got to go. <laughs> and I was like, oh. No, so, uh, so, back, so back then, obviously, you guys are a little bit older than me. I didn't remember, uh, I think we first played... Uh, we first played together. At Morongo, right? Or well, our first time in Vegas, remember when Jack, shout out again to Jack, he taught me how to play my favorite game ever, Craps. Jack was so methodical with oh those my games. God. When it came, uh, going, and gambling with Jack is great because he has every percentage. Sorry, Jack, put you on blast. Yeah, where he has every percentage and he had the breakdowns and cards and like when to go, when not to to, to bet and yeah. when to, yeah. you know, and what number to do it on. And uh, so it was fun, it's fun. But what if, did you look, if you're looking at a roulette table like this, I would play black. Oh, well, you guys don't know. He got right his uh, phone out. And... I'd play second and one right here in the middle. So if you hit any of these, you no triple your money. And then I played the second and 12. So if you hit anything in that box, you would also triple yeah. your money. Yeah. So basically, the ways to play it, there'd be, you know, there's three ways to go two to one from three to 36 on top. Uh, or I'm sorry, I don't know two what this one. little thing is right here. There's 30. Um, that's just. That's just like a. It's a table with thirty six numbers. Some are red, some are black. Yeah, and there's usually green and, and there's double a green zero. zero. There's usually a also zero. a double zero, but on this one is not. But so how I would those do are, it. Those were those were my plays. So yeah. I put uh, five or ten dollars, whatever it is, there, there, and there, and I would just keep repeating the same bet so, over and over. So what I would do, and I made a lot of money in Laughlin. I don't know if you were there for it. There was one trip I went to Laughlin. I brought hundred bucks. I'm like, I'm not even ready for this. Like, yeah. oh, whatever. My friends are edging me on. I turned that hundred into a grand. Oh, dude, I thought that was at Mor- Morongo. Morongo you- still owes me money. You made a lot of money at one time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I've never won in Morongo. We have stories at Morongo of you guys just somehow slotting it up and winning tremendous amounts of money. Yeah, and I, hey, I, I, I want to. After I used that, to win a lot. I want, of money you, to, I want you to tell them about your uh, the little cards that you would get in Vegas and using those for luck. Anyways, what were you? Yeah, doing? so I would do a pattern. I'd do one and four. Go up one, eight and eleven. Go up one and do four dollars. So these would be all dollar bets, by the way. And I would do four across the top. So I'd, I'd build. A, I'd literally do a pyramid, and then I'd cover. I do green, and then cover two in the middle. And I'd switch off and. And I you spell Habibi. On yeah. The... I um I didn't have enough room, but I would just do Hab. You know. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, nice. Anyway, Tommy. So you had your, your yeah yeah you had. I your had a system that worked. System. And it was funny because one time... Hey, I, once it works, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you just want to keep trying that. You're like, dude, it works. <laughs> yeah. You got to try it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Because it doesn't you just work. keep playing. Yeah, because it's so I dumb. I probably that lost we, more than I have ever won. Always. I think, that's, I think that's how it is when you gamble. No one should ever have... Like up, like tallied up. Oh yeah, my losses, you know, yeah. are not as much as my winnings. And you know they always lost no. if they ever say, "Yeah, I broke even." Hey, dude, it's funny too. Yeah. Um, when <laughs> I, when Ivy and I go to Vegas together, I always win and she always loses. She's supposed to be Lady Luck, dude. And hold on, she is, but for she you, has to be with her cousin. Her. No, she has to be with her cousin. If she's with her cousin Andrea and they're gambling together, they always win. Really? If Ivy's with me. She's. I always lose because I kind of get like sidetracked, and I'm like, she's like, oh, should we spend that money? Oh, what do you think? I'm like, just stop. Oh, she's you filling it. your head with doubts yeah. already. Yeah. No. And I won't take the bets. No. And, yeah. And so here's what I do. So I start stacking up. I'm like, oh wait, come on, you're cool. <laughs> table. <laughs> and then I get her, like, so she'll, she'll come. I can see her coming out the peripheral. I'm like, fuck. I'm, like, I'm trying to. I'm trying to yeah. play right now. Yeah. And then and I'll take this like a stack of chips, and I'm like, here, babe, go cash these. And then she goes away for like ten minutes, and, that's when you and I'm just harder. like betting, I'm gambling. I'm like, yeah, let's go, let's no go. No doubt, no doubt. And then yeah, there's no doubt. And then I can see her coming back, her little tiny self walking back. Hey, baby, I got the cash. In. I'm like, here, babe, take these chips, go away. And then, <laughs> and then like, well, this she goes away. Stocking and up then, chips for her. And then and send I, her once away. I'm done, and then I like tap mm-hmm. out, and I'm like, yo, how much do we make? You know, and it's like, you know, a couple hundred dollars, and we bounce. Yeah. Even it, we. 
But if she just stays at the table, dude, I'll lose, 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 <laughs> lose, see. lose. And, and I'm yeah. like, I have to send her and away. It, and it becomes superstitious at that point because, I mean, obviously she doesn't have anything to do with it, but there's something about... It's weird. If you think about it, if she's throwing negative thoughts yeah. to your head, like, you She's throwing like shade it, in my mind. Like, yeah. She's like, oh, should we... You suck. And then no, when you, you lose... So then no, when you, don't do that one. Yeah, because... No, do this number. Exactly. Like, ah! Because if she says <laughs> something and then if you Go lose, away! you're like, you were just telling me Shut negative thoughts. I was and I'm losing! Fun fact. I got these in Vegas with you, Mitch. Are those, those sunglasses? The Ray Bans. They have lost. Some haven't lost them. Remember we went? Yeah, to, we, we went to, to the Vegas. Outlet, the outlet stores on the way. Yeah, back. on the way back, and I won a bunch of money. I'm like, I'm buying these three hundred dollars. Yeah, I was. I, dude, I, still did, I, I lost a lot of money the last time we went. Love those things, dude. Dude, they're, they're like four years old. I'm so surprised. The, the Ray Bans. Well, the screen just went polarized. Away. <laughs> 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 really good, no, it, it's yeah, it's crazy because there's some menus that I go order food. Little side tangent. And I have walk with my glasses on, you know, they have like these LCD menus, and I don't see anything on the menu, and I'm just like, wait. Does my computer oh, look like, there it does is. my computer didn't look, you couldn't tell it was on when I you came tell. in. I can't tell, no, I can't it tell. It looks off right it's now? It's black right now when I have my glasses on, I take it off. It's, it's on. Like, it's like yeah. magic. <laughs> um, but Ooh. yeah, so Vegas, I mean, we have Dude, you reminded me of times. something funny, though, with the cards. Yeah. Uh, oh. when, when my first time we went to Vegas, you know, it was four of us guys, and so when you're out there walking the streets of Vegas, there's all those little hustler guys out of every corner, they're all tapping their hand. And they're handing out cards. And what is on those cards? Basically, like a little it's pictures of yeah, There's a picture of a girl on each card. One says candy. You know, one says you Crush. know what's so yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Oh Jenny on the corner or whatever. I want to order candy and crush. We're gonna have a great night. So we they used to give you those stacks, and there would be a call number for a call girl on smash. the actual card. Get it? Yeah, it'd be a phone number. Yeah. yeah. There's no way we were gonna call were, that. I thought you were making fun of the app. <laughs> Candy crush. No, no, candy no. Crush. well, I was, but um, my brother was all about collecting those cards. Really? We would, for good luck. Yeah, we would get the card, and we would put the girl in the corner of, like, the slot of the game you were playing, and if you lost, you'd be, get rid of that girl, and then you put, the, <laughs> put another card up. And Wait, you, what? Come on, Jenny! So, you take one of the cards, right? Because yeah. they give you, like, a stack of, like, those different pictures of girls with, like, a phone number. Yeah. And then you put it on the corner of the game that you're playing, whether it's a slot. Oh, so you're saying or, you had, like, your own lady luck at first? Yeah, we were, we, were using oh them, we were using those cards as lady luck. And then if we lost that game, they only got one chance and they were gone. And then if, like, somebody was winning a lot, if somebody was winning a lot of money with, like, they so say, you had like a lucky card like yeah, this one I yeah. keep winning with? There, there was one that said like, oh, like Tiffany or whatever. It's like some some filth, did filthy you, girl. Did you like eventually call her and be like, you bet you want me so much no, money. No, dude. We ne- I don't, Come to I, my room. I never called those things, dude. I, I, no, of course not. You don't know. If we'll that's, talk about that later. Yeah, no. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> dude, uh, imagine. I, I can see Doer or Josh. I could see Doer or Josh, you know, behind closed doors, like, actually calling one of those stupid phones. Doer or Josh. Just those two. Yeah. Just, like, yeah. Hey, like snickering, dude, calling it, and she goes, hello. Oh, you mean, like, hello. pranking them? Yeah, they ho- say, hello. And then, just, oh, hang up the phone, you know, or something <laughs> like that. But, dude, yeah. So, we, we would use those cards as lady luck, and that was, of course, we were just a bunch of young single guys being stupid out there on the strip, and... Yeah. Those, I mean, that that first time I was out there in Vegas, I, I mean, we went to a, St- a Steel Panther concert. I remember hearing about this. And we got kicked there. out. Yeah, yeah we got it, kicked out of it because and it's my story. Hey, it's hard to get kicked out of a hair metal concert. Yeah, dude. like everyone's going is pretty wild in a hair metal concert, and so to get kicked out, you have to do something really stupid. I was in there with Jack, and he had a bottle. With Mitch, it's hot out here for Jack. Jack had a bottle of water, and he just like starts laughing. And Jack takes a bottle of water and just throws it right at the oh, base's head. Shit show. Are you serious? Jack <laughs> threw it. He just threw it at the base's head, and they oh. all stop. They stop the song. And they're like in the middle of "Welcome to the Jungle." Like, hey, get these motherfuckers out of our show. Welcome to. Yeah, hey, dude. what the? So the, the security they pull oh us out the back gosh. door. And you there's too, like, huh? Yeah, just me and Jack, and we're surrounded by security guards, and they're like asking us for ID. And they're like, where are you guys from? I thought it was like, it was like, like, like I thought fellas. he said he was thirsty, dude. Dude, Sorry, I, I thought it was. So, so you thought you were going to get like, I thought they were going to kill us. Or something? Yeah, oh, exactly. Dude, I, thought like, was, I just watched the movie Casino. Yeah, I thought it was going to be good fellas. I thought they were just going to stab us, throw us in a bin. Dude, I thought Whoa. that was it. But they they told us just get out of here. You know, they they kicked us out. They, no you guys funds. were, well, you guys were over 18. Well, we, we were 21, dude. That was the year we turned yeah. 21. And that's why our birthdays like, were in the same month. Out. That's why we went to the to Vegas that time. God, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Well, that nine was years? That was a nine years ago. Because I'm almost 30 now. Yeah. <laughs> so Shout out to Jack. That was a long almost time ago. Almost getting you guys murdered. Dude, yeah. <laughs> but I, dude, even – and Josh went on that trip. And he was only 18. So he couldn't do half the stuff that were at places that where me and Jack went. And so he was just hanging with Dewar. And he went down – the first day we went, and he was in a casino – 
he put five bucks in. He wasn't supposed to be playing the game, and he hit a jackpot, a mini jackpot. Where, See, you where can't he, do that. Yeah, he won like two hundred bucks. Yeah, but yeah. then he cashed it out, and we were so scared, like that. He was the first one we ever saw win a game at, in Vegas because we yeah. were just checking in for our first time in Vegas ever. Yeah. So why wouldn't somebody else claim the prize? No, he just got the voucher, and he could have walked over and cashed it out. They're not going to ask you for ID. And then, there's machines that yeah, cash two, out. Yeah, two hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. but I don't it's, care. Yeah, we were unless it's like two yeah. grand. Like, okay, can I see your ID? Yeah, maybe. Wait, so oh, that what was, happened with the yeah. voucher? He took it. He cashed it out. You know, oh. but uh, we were kind of like thinking, like, oh, what if they come over and they see his ID? But even to, then, but even then, what you can do, you know, let's just say, of course, it got you on camera, but just to you know minimize it, they would just give it to a friend that was over twenty one, and just you know, you would hold on to it for a while, and then you could. Yeah. Like, Dude, you know what? Exactly. That much work. You know my you favorite. Know? Like, no, we saw you here at three thirty nine. Three John. hours later, we followed. Yesterday, the trail. You Dude, my, my, my favorite memory though of being in Vegas with you <laughs> was when oh. you, you and Rafi and Mason were at that that we were doing karaoke till five in the morning. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> that place doesn't exist anymore. Oh, uh, really? I was so bummed out. I keep trying to look for this outdoor. Remember karaoke Mason spot. just singing just. Song dude, after song, and, it, and there was nobody left, dude. It, it was, was so, so much fun, though. What do you mean nobody left? That place was packed. Till not five at five in the morning. In the morning. Not yeah. at five, dude. Well, I was probably too drunk to remember. Maybe I left after three. Everyone started but, taking off. First of all, we, we were have still a, out there. We have a million Vegas stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we literally were talking for the next two hours. And that's true, dude. And you know, because I, because I have a million in my head. I want to talk. And I'm like, no, John, you can't say all those stories. All right, well, all right, we'll move, we'll move on from Vegas. <laughs> but look, so, and I think we spiraled in that direction, like somehow talking about your music or whatever. But uh, um, the biggest, but the biggest era for you when you were playing it was. Would you say that it was when you were with the band Another Rising? Um, no, no. Okay, Reason that's why. just the, that's what was Vegas in my we head. We had the big and. But likely so, because we had the biggest amount of money put into this band and the biggest amount of time, and it was definitely our most professional, uh, like the most professional pre-production that that I've done a yeah. part of any band. Because we spent five grand on an album, we recorded in, in Bomb Shelter Studios, which was owned yeah. by Stone Temple Pilots. Right. You know, big deal. We got to party with New Year's Day. It was so much fun. Like, That's yeah. awesome. it was a giant loft, like a multi-million dollar studio. We had for days on end. They gave us like the indie label uh, discount because we were on a major label, so we can actually afford it. Um, <laughs> and it was so much fun. And you, thank you. I was so glad you were there to record it and document it because that was. Now I I know how, I remember I know New Year's why. Day and they actually are on one of the tracks. Yeah, of yeah. The uh, AR EP or no the album like Legends We Fall. It was an EP. Um, it was a six song EP. And what is EP again? Uh, EP is just basically it's oh my god what does it mean? Extended play. Really? Episode. Mm -hmm. Episode. <laughs> no, it's just it's you have LP and EP. LP I know snow means longer, but and then EP. A long play. And I don't know why I don't know this. This is so funny. I just, <laughs> I just never really. I just know what the difference is. It's never even like. LP is. This is an embarrassing. Play, and the EP is extended play. Uh, Are you looking it up? What I'm is looking EP? It up, Are you googling it? I don't believe you. I'm just kidding. He's so like, yeah, oh, extended yeah. play. Yeah, I'll turn it over for music. Extended uh, compared to like one song, so it's extended, whereas you might get five. It's funny because extended play uh, doesn't really. Makes it doesn't sense. stack up well against long play. But no. yeah, but a it's long weird. how long was it? Oh, it's long. long. So EPs were how typically like six long. like six or lower. Like six song EP was great, five song. And then LP would be like, you know, okay, at least ten to twelve songs. Yeah, an album. Um yeah, it'd be like it's another word for an album. Yeah, like full length album. It was like when I first uh, wrote my first album. Which is just weird. <laughs> yeah. That, that those that little acronym doesn't make sense, but So when you guys finished like Legends We Fall yeah, yeah. with another rising, why did that band break up? That's a good question, and I might throw people under the bus for that answer. I don't know. I don't because care. you guys, uh, we, look, I remember Josh quit the band, but you replaced him with the. Uh, I never replaced Josh. He was replaced with the guy. Oh, named Anthony. oh, oh, yeah. We replaced him as a band. I think I meant I physically. No, no, no. There was two guitarists. John was one. Yeah. Josh was the other. Yeah, jo Josh. When Josh quit is when. Wait, they... Josh plays the guitar. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's funny. That's funny. You know. Uh, so yeah, Josh. When Josh quit was actually kind of like when things started. Actually, his favorite song now that plays. So I quit. There, there's, a lot, there's, a, there's a lot of reasons that I don't even think I should really even honestly go tell. into. Yeah, like I'm. I'll, but long I'll, story I'll, short, I'll, long story short, it, it just it podcast. We, we never, answer. we never uh, caught traction with the new album that we were working on, and that happens. I mean, you remember 
I mean, so I can't. Because the can't songs say will it. speak for themselves. There was a few good it. songs though. We actually played Earth's Farewell" on the podcast. Yeah, thank you for that. That was actually that was my the comment song. I think on the you record. could pay us later. It's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, it's probably <laughs> no, the comment song no, on the record. I'll tell you guys the reason why, and you'll understand why. Like, oh yeah, we can't. Just tell that. us off air. Just tell us off yeah. air. That's fine. Can I like pause it and then like? We, I'm just kidding. No, we'll do just, it later. <laughs> just, I would say just give us a, on podcast. We're the answer. Yeah, you, you said um, so just cert, uh, conflict of interest and certain people became unavailable. Okay. Uh, when we needed them most, we lost traction because of that. We just lost momentum, and you know it sucks because we had just spent like a lot of money on the record, and right. we, and it was such a cool record. Yeah, it was it, fun, dude. It still kind of holds up. Like we recorded it. In I, was, I was really yeah, and look, I'm not. I wasn't even in the band, but I was just so excited because I was. They were recording record. from yeah. the very beginning. And I remember... Which got a wristband, got yeah. excited. Even yeah. down to the last... He bought another jacket. Yeah. Dude, I remember, <laughs> I remember that jacket. <laughs> he he was like, like, cool, guys. Dude, no, no, it was great. I remember Dude, the, I'm a filmmaker, I, right? I, I, re- I remember the last day. And, uh, Aviators. You guys were, yeah. do, you guys were doing like the, the last... Mix it in, the, in the bomb shelter or uh, no, or at Eugene's. At, at Eugene Pereira's yeah. who mixed Shout that. Shout out to Eugene. I think he's in Japan now, by the way. You were like, you were. Whoa! You, yeah, he's in Japan. He's teaching kids in Japan. Get, in Japan. Get, <laughs> what the? Dude, he told you. Was it street Fighter right, fucking yeah. <laughs> Just were you? All right, anyway, sorry. Did, no, you didn't you tell him to like turn up the lead? You're like, I don't know, dude. That lead sounds a little low, Eugene. No, no, On, no, 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 uh, no. So, yeah. Eugene, if we want to talk about the recording process really <laughs> Eugene and I, I, you Eugene and I had a, up. Eugene and I were on the same same wave uh, wavelength where I, there was even some mistakes in Raven's drum parts that I caught and he was like oh dude I didn't even catch that he was like you should be a producer I'm like yeah well no I don't really well, I don't like being a producer because I don't like sitting down for so long just hearing the same thing loop for three seconds just so I can find the right Boring. but but yeah there was there were a lot of parts of Eugene and I like I had such I was such a perfectionist. Yeah, when it came to like what was gonna be on the record, and so you, you kind of have to be. Yeah, yeah but man. some people That's like your work. Yeah, some people rush through. They're like, ah, it's good enough, and I'm like, no, like I will, I will like <laughs> <laughs> upload it. Yeah, because yeah. not, not all the guys were yeah. there. Not all the guys were. It there. It would just be, no, because Eugene, I would, I think I would keep Eugene and check. Like Eugene was a great producer. Get me yeah. wrong, but I would, I think I would, as far as us recording, whenever it was my turn, or whenever we listened back, I would be listening to it in such a you know degree where. He would be like, oh, yeah, okay, wait, it's John. You know, we're going to be, like, really making this shit tight. We're really going to be, you know, dotting our I's, crossing our T's. And and so that's why it was, everyone's like, John's in there forever. And I'm yeah, like, no, because yeah. Eugene and I actually were on the same wavelength. We're like, I want this to be perfect. If I mess up even in the slightest yeah. little... Three decibels little, too high. Like, the, just the, like, where people will be like, that's fine, where, like, I hear a mistake. Yeah. And so... You but you listen to the, re- the masters on that of that album now, and it's, it still sounds that's really great. good. That's good, though, that's dude. Great. That's The that's mixing good. is really That's well good done. to, like, be able to critique your own work like that to, and be a perfectionist, because... Like you have dude, to, you right? want to throw out the best of you. Yeah. It's yeah, like no. why? Why are you? You're paying so much money. First of all, yeah. let's just say that. Yeah. Why would you want to throw you know, garbage? Yeah. Yourself? Why would like, you wanna... Oh, that's fine. No, dude, you're spending so much money. <laughs> you're like, yeah, like, I screwed maybe up I most of the album. It's not like you were doing like it a... yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, we'll put a million CDs. We only paid five grand. Yeah, let's just it's run not, with it's it. It's not like you were doing a Backstreet Boys laundromat parody or anything like that. By the way, that was hilarious. Cue the kids. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! I you know what? Cheap we, jokes. We, 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 we say that. Cheap once jokes. By the end we, we can't plan those songs. It has to be while we're recording and do it. it like if we try to pre-plan any of those songs, then it just doesn't work out. It's well, a, well, for you guys, I mean, it's a two-hour, it's a two or three-hour bit to get a 15, 30 seconds on. Yeah, no, but you guys actually see that's the work. A lot of podcasts don't really do that because you guys are funny. You guys are silly. And oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Cue the kids. Yeah, we're not. Well, we're not. <laughs> no, no, I can't cue the kids. Uncue the kids. Uncue the kids. John, I remember. I, this, Sorry, are, this, this is a little off track with the music, Ugh. but while we were recording, a, a lot of times to take breaks, you guys would play basketball at your house, Laker games, and you guys would play basketball. And I remember you made a fam- Lakers. You guys, you made a famous shot. In oh my God, I did make a famous shot. I'm so glad you remember right. this. So, uh, growing up in Bellflower, we had a basketball court and we had it in our driveway. And so, I was just messing around with shots and it was myself, like the whole band, and you. Yeah. John and, Jordan! And so, basically, what happened was I was shooting from behind the, the back. backboard. Right. In yeah. From my neighbor's yard. I was in James's yard. Child while James. lighting a hookah. <laughs> while lighting a hookah and <laughs> sipping on some Adak for all those Lebanese <laughs> people <laughs> there. <laughs> anyway, so I was shooting it and I was making these shots, which were crazy. Everyone was like, oh, shit. 
my dad happened to be driving in. Taking pictures. Well, of course, he's a documentary. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah, he would have that thing like, yeah, on automatic fire, uh, dude. Just freaking. <laughs> shout out to my dad. Love you. Um, yeah, DJ. Love you best. And so he was driving in, and he was like, he saw me make the shot, and everyone's like, yeah, that's so cool. My dad's getting out. I was like, you won't make it again. And I'm like, oh, what? challenge accepted. Yeah, and I'm like, and he's like, overtime. Here we go. Do you remember? He's like, yeah. I, I bet you sixty dollars you won't make it again. And I was like, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm like, all right. And I just dribble a little bit, and I'm, you know, I'm like not in the same yard, you know. I'm just like trying to do calculations, and I shoot this thing, and it just goes, <laughs> nothing but net, and yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. and the city of Buffalo goes. And my dad was it's like, rich. oh my god, and because you know, he called me Paying out. Paying you in pesos. Like Kobe, <laughs> like Kobe. He <laughs> called me out on the spot in front of everyone, and I made it. You, yeah. That's the moment you're talking about, right? Yeah. That was, that was so cool. It was from behind the, that's what I was thinking. It was it was from behind the, the basketball, uh, the basket. Yeah, I, I was shooting. So he had to go um, over a, ba- a backboard, which was the craziest part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to shoot it's straight backwards. up. I had to angle it so high up, and I was, and I wasn't even, I wasn't right behind the backboard. No, I was like. Far. From Were you the wearing your PF flyers? Yeah. Oh, man. Spring shoes. Yeah, I was. I was. Uh, I threw some uh, PF some sandals. flubber on my on my soles, and yeah. you know, I was able to. But that was a cool. Thing. Hey, you dude. Side what? note. I used to work with your dad for a year, right. selling That's cars. Right. Yeah, yeah. Back yeah. in like 2008. Ooh. Dude. How was that? I was working for my dad. What was it like? Oh, it was awesome, awesome, dude. Uh, first off, I knew Joe. Uh, uh, you know, John's dad. His name is Joe. Uh, from before, hanging out, scouts. Um, you knew him. You're like, oh, this is John's dad. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also working with him, it was he taught me a lot, dude. Your dad's a freaking good closer. He is a business freaking man. I was like, like I was, in him. dude. I was at his left pocket, like every everywhere he went. He's like, this is we're gonna close these. We're going to close these guys. You know, I'm like, all right, all right. what are we gonna do? Dude, we we had so many tactics. Tell like, me about it, because I actually don't know about. Oh, it. it's so much fun, dude. Like your dad was so much fun to work with. Like he would just just tell me random stuff outside, and this is like 2008. Yeah, and it's 2018 now. It's yeah. 10 years ago. Jesus, we would do stuff like, um, you know, he would tell me to quote a client a certain amount, mm. and then um, and then call in the office. Because uh, he would be in another office like, okay. with, with all the other guys. So you call in and then... And I'm like, hey, guys, uh, they're willing to do X, Y, Z. Yeah. And then pretend to hang up. And then <laughs> they would still be on speakerphone, yeah. but mute. And then the guys in the office could hear what we were saying in the, that office Ooh. off that phone. And, and working uh, the car dealership. <laughs> and I would be like, hey, guys, okay, they said we can do, like, you know, 260, da 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 It's going to be this much out the door, tax and license, blah, blah, blah. Um, is that something you guys could do? Oh, well, you know, just let us talk about it. No problem. I leave the room. We hear everything they're saying in that box. <laughs> wow. Oh. So they'll be like, babe, you know, I told you. Sneaky. 250 is the max we can even go. And then, you know, they, <laughs> we'd hear all this, dude. And then we'd be like, all right, cool. So I'd go back in there. And I'm like, hey, guys, is anybody want coffee and something to drink? You know, and they'd be like, oh, no, we're okay. Hey, guys, while I was in the office... Um, my, my manager found, my manager found a, an actual deal. It was really <laughs> oh good. God. We were able to apply this coupon, and, oh and uh, we got it down to two hundred and fifty. And they're like, "You got a deal, man!" Like, wow, dude, just tactics yep. like that. Or wow. it just my picked, dad like orchestrated that. Oh, kind he of thing? swindled. I'm, uh, sure I'm not gonna say yes or no, but oh, your dad was dude. He was a G at selling. Yeah. Dude, your dad was always legendary because I remember even people like that were, would be like because you guys used to have like bonfires every weekend yep. at your house. You guys were fun. known for, you know, if it wasn't like there would be like I said, guitars out. There would be people. Everyone's hanging out. Have some more wings, brother. Yeah, and uh, I remember somebody was telling the legend about how they said they saw like countless amounts of women call crawl through a window to oh, see your father. Can I say that on the podcast? Sure, dude. My dad yeah, yeah, yeah. it, man. <laughs> like they said, I have never seen so many women no, crawl my, through a my window. Dad, what? My dad... <laughs> I gotta hear the story. My dad's a stud. And, uh, Back in the day. So, dude. And it's weird because he never boasts. I always have to find out stories from every Yeah, like this one. Member. You didn't even know this one. From I didn't brother. know this one, yeah. Dude, I went to a... I went to a uh, Those are always the best stories. Dude. I went to a uh, motivational... like. Uh, not, I don't want to say a motivational speech. Like a seminar or something? Like a seminar, yeah. Thank you. Okay. And with your dad, we rode up together. Cool. 
And it was in like Anaheim or like somewhere. And we went and was it for the car? It sales? was for the car business. Okay. They they sent. They were like, "Hey, we're gonna send a couple people." And then I think our team went. It oh, was me and Joe. We're on the same nice. team. And he, so when you sell cars, uh, there's you know the sales guy in the top front back in the day at least. Um, and then you know you'd go out and you know catch the fish that are like shopping for cars, right. reel them in with your good looks, and yeah. then you take them into the box, which is know. like you know um, you know you sit down, do paperwork, blah, blah blah. And if I was not able to close them, or if I felt like a certain way, hey, they might need a second voice, and like someone's to kind of sweeten the deal, you'd have the closer come in and and, and close the deal. So. Joe was like a manager, and then he would have like a couple of different like sales guys underneath him. I was manager. the best, um, and <laughs> and then dude, and then so I would I would always like, all right, dude, this is how they are, and then I would prep him before he comes in. He's like, okay, hello, my friends, like, and then like, and then he would go in and he would like know all these random facts about them because I prepped them like on you know. Oh my god! And like we would be on because I'd be I'd spend you know thirty minutes, forty minutes with these people outside, showing them different cars. You know, uh, taking them on test drives yeah. and, like, kind of getting to know their personality. Yeah. And then, like, so I was able to, like, speed up and tell them, like, like you know, 30 facts really quick. So inside and then, scoop right here. And then, like, you know, <laughs> so he can learn the whole post personality before he walks in. And I'm like, Brrr, and he's like, okay, great. And he just know the angle to take to close these people. And it worked like a charm. My dad cl- was just was the closer, huh? Just the master closer, bro. Yeah. It, was, it was so much fun. It... It got to a point at that point where like the market crashed in 2008 yeah. and then nobody started buying cars anymore. But yeah. between 2006 and 2008, thing. I was able to sell between like 12 to 15, 20 cars a month. Wow. No problem. Dude, I was... Making good money, right? Yeah, yeah. Like some weekends I'd sell like three cars in a day. I'd, wow. I'd be texting... Bitch, I'd be texting dad. I sold another one. Yeah. I sold another Dude, one. I remember I sold you another used one. to come to the house, you know, just to grab lunch or something. And, and then... You used to have a different car like, every time. Wow. Every time. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And then I, after after those oh, nights, I would go. Uh, after those nights, I, after I sold cars, I would go. To, I would drive to Fullerton and go smoke hookah because I was only uh, eighteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was all mixed up with all the Arabs. Like, yeah, you were. Like, I was. Yeah, I, yeah, Arab, yeah. I smoked with Arabs. I know. Arabs. And then, I, and then we got to know the plane. Chad, right? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. I just saw his little brother a few days ago. Did you? At, at Calavera, some bellflower. Yeah. Uh, actually, last Tuesday. Anyway. Anyways, yeah, so one night I was like, Joe, we just sold a. A lot of cars. Let's go. Let's go smoke hookah. And he's like, let's go. And then we went to we went and smoked hookah. And I introduced him to like the because I knew the owners of yeah. this hookah bar called yeah. Twilight. I remember Twilight. Yeah. yeah, and I knew the owners, and I used to bring like um I used to bring like five, ten, fifteen people every weekend. The Jod used to work that was there me, too, huh? The Jod worked there. Jad? Jad, yeah, yeah, Jad, Jad and his brother. So yeah, they yeah, worked yeah. there. No, no, no. They they were just regulars, like regulars. Me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Then I kind of like started promoting for that place. And I'll just bring tons of friends in all the time. That was before I started my like club promoting days. Oh, they loved me because yeah. they're like, dude, you brought in like fifteen people this yeah. week. Like, thank yeah. you. <laughs> and every time I, I went there, they would always like this the lady Nadia, who's the owner, she would always give me a free hookah and a free monster energy drink. Yeah. Because that was my shit. That was it. And she's like, saying, she's like she's like Tommy, she's like, go get your hookah and go get your monster. Yeah, go, and go, out go, of the fridge, and then I just walk like like a boss, dude. And then one night I remember your dad, I was like, Joe, let's go. Let's go to and I was like, I got this place on lock, bro. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna show my dad. I like, walked what in like a there. fucking yeah. king, bro. Yeah. And like I was like, Joe, I got you tonight. Yeah. And like I was like, I was like, calling people by name. Yeah. I knew the belly dancer. Yeah. Like, like I knew the DJ. Yeah. I was like, hey, come here, bro. Like I was like, I was like, come on, let's put on that song. I'll get people dancing. Yeah. I had a ton yeah. of feeling. I had a ton of energy back in those days. Just uh. getting people dancing, like, <laughs> and it was so much fun. We created yeah. like such a cool environment in this yeah. place, and yeah. like. It was rad, dude. That was before I was 21 and we were, weren't able to drink. So we yeah. would just all congregate there, smoke hookah, yeah. drink a ton of energy drinks, like just get everyone dancing. <laughs> so what like, did my dad say? It was like, so yeah. much fun. Your dad, bro, your dad had so much fun. <laughs> like, I remember a couple of times, I, I remember going there on an off night and he was there. He's like, ah. I was like, well, <laughs> you're here. Dad, you're here. Oh, 
he was I'm never he was never un- inappropriate, yeah. but he was just always having a good time. No, my dude. and my dad knew that boundary. Yeah, you know, but I love how we. But your dad is a party animal. Dude. Yeah, dude. No, and, my, and he's so much fun. He is. I mean, if I had half his charisma, dude, I'd be conquering the world. Like, I mean, but not in that <laughs> yeah, sense. It's not in that sense. It's his confidence. He's just so bro. charming. Yeah, because yeah, because it's, I love how dude Tommy. Thanks for all the words. Yeah, but for anyone that. listening, they yeah. must wonder like, what's Tommy doing partying with some older dad? You know, like, what's that? That sounds like, no. Goofy, but if you know Joe, it's like, dude, he is the life of no, the party. No, my dad is like, he's like the cool dad. Like wherever he shows up, and it's dude, like, I oh, had Joe's so much here. respect for him then yeah. too. And, you know, just and I always have. One of the, yeah, one of and the he cool. was just like, I was just like Joe, and I wanted to impress him. Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, dude, like, come on, dude. You were, work, you were working you. with him too. So I was 21, 22 years old. That's you know, cool, making man. you know a thousand dollars a weekend. I thought I was doing good. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. and it was great, bro. Like, the one thing about about the one thing though I'll say about your dad too is that. He was always on top of technology, and I think yes. you guys were like the first family with the four. He always had a Bluetooth in his we ear. Were, we you were guys like had the Joneses dude. of like the, the 1950s. It was like if yeah. there was something new, he bought it. He bought dude, it. He bought 4K it. 3D TV. When that was the thing, it was like had a curve, and you're like, "Hey, I have a 3D TV at my house." I'm like, "You have a what?" So, but the, but this was back. Yeah, remember? Because uh, and we bought, dude, we bought so many uh, Blu-ray. Excuse me, blu- <laughs> 3D Blu-ray. Uh, you know, dude, this. I bought one just to go watch it at your house. Did Jurassic you? Park? Oh my god, you're right. Remember that? I yeah. bought the 3D Jurassic Park and then we went to your house and I was like, you have the goggles or whatever to watch dude, it? We had, so back when 3D, <laughs> 3D was like prevalent for like maybe like one year, like one or two years. Yeah, because it's it not was as a big, big anymore, deal. Huh? No, it's like people don't, it, don't even manufacture 3D anymore because, you know, it's just, it's, it's more of a headache than, I think the cons exceed the pros, but when you first have it and you're like, oh, Yeah, it's, it's cool, tight, dude. You know, because people don't, they're not used to like putting on 3D glasses, maintaining that, to watch TV. TV just is such an autonomous like thing. So I think like that went against it, you know, but we, when we had it, man, we had it, you know? Yeah. We, we, I think we watched like Avatar like 20 times. Oh, that's a good movie. I dude. think we had like nights where it's like we invite people over because we had like 10 of these classes. Oh, you that did? That would connect. The, they were like little, you know, you would power them on and they would connect to the TV. <laughs> like the TV would say, oh yeah, connected, connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would turn on and we had like Avatar viewing parties. Like yeah. it was so weird because Avatar, first of all, that... I mean, I don't care what you say. If you have a movie it's that James says... James Cameron, dude. He yeah. just directed one of my favorite movies, Terminator 2. Yeah, yeah. So other than that, like, I, like you know, if you have a 3D TV and you're watching a bunch of 3D movies, you're just trying to enjoy them all, you notice, like, dude, Avatar just destroys all these movies. because cause, The, the cause 3D looking, version does, yes, right? Yeah, yeah, so the 3D in the movie was done so well because... And then I'm like, why is that? I'm looking into it. Okay, there are films that get... Uh, you know, like uh, translate into 3D, right? And the films that actually filmed in, actual yeah, yeah, 3D. I mean, that was like and the, so the was beta like, of all that, right? Yeah, so because th- they get converted in 3D, those suck. It's like it's like a headache. No, the the know? converted version of JP Jurassic Park that we watched well, was, sh- was well, well done. I'm sure, well, no, I'm sure but not as good. Yeah, that's it's, different. It's, no, it's there's Avatar. some films, yeah. No, there's some films that they like you watch them in 3D and you're like this is a headache versus yeah it wasn't meant for it yeah where I mean did it half ass they're trying to put E.T. in 3D you're like dude this was not meant for 3D well you know it was was just yeah 3D E.T. 3D (laughs) it's just Michael Jackson's head (laughs) oh my god you're now watching E.T. in 3D Um, but yeah so I mean we had a lot of fun times and a lot of the times we were watching uh, you would come over and we'd watch 3D movies we were just plowing down on some super fries yeah, there, that was oh a, one of the places we so loved to go Alberts. eat. It was before you. No one was counting calories. No one was on a diet bed. We were young. We were burning it off. You said, "Let's go to uh, this place called Alberts." Yeah, your metabolism was yeah. great. It was uh, a yeah. it was Alberts, and uh, it was on Tabitha Alondra, Alondra, right by both of our houses. And it's literally yeah. a plate of fries. And there, when I say like there's there's sour cream on it, I don't mean like there's a scoop of sour cream in the corner. It's like there's a full layer of sour cream, a full layer of carne asada, of guacamole, of fresh salsa. Then you eat it. It's more food than like any like that we've eaten here today, guys. Yeah, we and eat a lot of food. When you eat it, you would go into a coma. And I remember one night, dude. We I got a whole super fry. You Jesus. ate a whole super fry. Josh ate a super fry, and we were all so full. And we then we all started out. laughing. Remember that? We started laughing to like to the point where I was like, we thought it was you like. Were, were we there? Or were at my house? We were at your house, dude, and you're oh in your back gosh. house. And we were laughing to the point where like we thought they put something in the food because it was just I like something was that. so hysterical, dude. I don't know. I mean, we were, dude, the food comas were dude, super real. Do you remember when you were, I don't think I was there, but you told me the story. You what? were at Albert's with Rocky and you guys got in a, Oh a my God. <laughs> I was with, okay, so 
There's a bunch oh, of Albert's locations. Fight? No, there's a bunch of Albert's locations. There's like Albert's, Alberto's, Albert, yeah. Albert One, Albert, like Al Alberitos, Alberitos. There's like, there's, like, there's so many. There's like, Burr, Burr, number six. No, there's just so many, uh, <laughs> like, so many Alberts yeah. and different renditions of them. But the, the really, really good one was one in Norwalk off of, um, I think it was off Firestone. Yeah, off Firestone. There was two of them. It was so weird. There was one off Firestone. Right next to each other, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. You could literally probably walk to them and, like, across from Imperial to Firestone. They're brothers. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was so Albert weird. And Alberto. The, Alberto best one, the best one everyone always went to was the one on Firestone. And so, you know, we've been going there for years. And I show up with Rocky and uh, my boy Spencer. Spencer Baldwin, shout out. He's doing big things right now. Um, big uh, things, so popping. proud of him. He's actually, Little things stopping. He's moving to uh, <laughs> moving to Tacoma, Washington. He just got the, the job of his dreams, and I'm so proud of him. What's he doing? Uh, I'm not really sure yet. Oh, because it's because it's, it's his so dream, new. not yours. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> no. he's gonna be Spencer a middle school Baldwin. teacher. <laughs> he <laughs> <laughs> really his work ethic is just like bar yeah, none. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. inspirational. Dude, so I, rem- I remember him, but, seeing yeah. his some of his music videos. I think in 2014 yeah. or 15. Yeah, he and got his dream great. job. And as a I was, I was like, I, I text him like, "What are your export settings, bro?" And Final Cut Pro because I couldn't get it that crisp. Dude, and then he was, he was so good. And then he, he would just, email me like full pictures and details on how he did things. He was just to the crap. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. And and the thing is, like, when he committed to something, he became obsessed with it in the most positive way. And and he, his work ethic is insane. And you know, shout out to him. But he was there. Okay, it, yeah. it was us three. This was back in uh, so Come Back Spencer Alive days. Rocky. This is another band. That I don't, you don't even have on the list. Uh, Lord, come, which one? Come Back Alive. Oh, uh, what does that Jeez, say right there? Bitch. Right before Wait, Tanner what does that say? screw up Dude, the I wrote it down. I wrote Hey, no, I, I, I remembered that band because I had your we guys. Played a lot of fun I had wristbands. That and I, I had a wristband. Come back. Oh yeah, we had some merch out. We yeah, the black and yellow wristbands yeah. for a long black time. Yellow, yeah. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. Brr, brr, brr. So we were at we were at Alberts, the OG Alberts off Firestone, the best. The OG Alberts, the one where you're. You know s- that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit that out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tommy. No, I'm no uh, so basically. <laughs> so we were at this Alberts, and, and there was this guy sitting there, and he knew one of the guys that worked. There was this guy sitting in one of the one of the booths, and he knew one of the guys that worked. They were ordering our food, and this guy walks up. He's like, "You looking at me, funny fool?" I'm like, "Nah, man, I'm Dude. trying to get some food." No, nigga, I got a lazy eye. I, don't, I mean, I do have a lazy eye. <laughs> me too. Yeah, lazy eyes. <laughs> yeah, you know, especially when I'm about to get some Hashtag. food. You know, so we're we're at the Alberts. It's funny because we just brought Spencer. To this, uh, to this location because we're like, yeah, we want to show you, we want to show you our fries, not this Huntington Beach stuff. We want to show you like our super fries because they're different places, different super fries. And so, but it was funny because this guy just starts like game banging on me. Like, right. look, you you look at me, you look at me. I'm man. not. I, I I don't exude game bang material. Like I'm a tall dude with tight jeans and, <laughs> and, and a guitar, a, and a sweater. You know, like this yeah. is like I'm not. And he just keeps dude, looking at me. Dude, dude wait, for the record, how tall are you, dude? You're like six what? I'm like six five. Per six okay, four. Yeah. So John's a big dude, and you bet John was like a, a bouncer. I'm a jolly green John. I'm six four. Yeah, two. I was a bouncer. Hey, who's yeah. taller? I think I'm taller. No, I think, taller, no, I think John's like... taller, dude. His hair. It's the not the hair, dude. He's just a taller. Actually, no, you got like a whole. <laughs> <laughs> you got a. You got a. I got a he's probably got a good inch or two. I got a five head, bro. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but, um, it's funny. No, so we were. So this guy kept like. Mad dog and mad dog, and I'm horses. just like, what the hell is this guy doing? Yeah. And then he just gets up and like flashes a knife, and he starts saying, "I'll never forget like the gang." It's all cut your burrito, like, fool. It was like, fool, I'm ripping. Like I think he said, like young uh, blood, like psycho like, trace, hey, fool, psycho trace, and I'm like, what the fuck? And I and I just like, I'm not gonna bitch out on this guy. Like, no, I didn't order that. And because because I'm like, dude, does it's it a look tiny like guy, right? Yeah, whatever, a tiny guy with a knife, he feels mm-hmm. great. But I he, I look at him like, bro, does it look like I'm like a gangbang, bro? Like, why are you picking on someone who doesn't like who has no, you know, no? He's not in your circle, bro. Like, I'm not trying to be territorial. Stay your lane. Yeah. Stay your lane. Yeah, you know, I'm Wait, trying to was order he by, some food. Was he by himself? He was by himself, but he knew the owner, which was weird. I'm not owner. Uh, I'm sorry. He knew someone that was working there, and they because yeah. they were conversing, but then they like allowed this to happen. He's like, "You talking to my girl Cynthia?" Fool? The, the I don't know. No, he was Asian. She right? took my order, sir. I, I don't was know. weird. No, he was, wasn't Asian. He was a Mexican guy. Yeah, a Mexican guy. Yeah. So, and you were with Rocky. You was like, I was with Rocky and Spencer, the whitest, pastiest man. Yeah. Like he's yeah, whiter yeah, yeah. than you guys. You know, yeah. like he's so white. So That's it's like obviously, something. yeah, it really is. It's funny. No, I'm just kidding. But 
I swear, hey, like, come on, dude. Like, we are just some, like, rocker kids, like, trying to get some fries. John pulls an AK and, from his and backpack. I, <laughs> John, uh, did you want to say something? Oh, my God. I will go. Yeah. AK, I got no shoes. AK-47. <laughs> no, B- B4-1 on Counter-Strike. I want the B4, Texas one. B4-1, B6, <laughs> yeah. all those Counter-Strike. <laughs> wait, B4-1, yeah. B6. Wait, B6 is extra ammo, B6 right? extra ammo! <laughs> Anyway, yeah, we don't have to freak B4-1. Hey, so, yeah, so I'm B3-1 was the MP5 strike code. I'm talking to this guy. The, the thing is, though, so Spencer, Spencer always carries a knife. Uh-huh. So I knew that. And then so I knew Spencer had my back if anything was going down. This was so long ago. This is hilarious. Like 2000, dude, this is like 2011. And, but I just remember, like, I'm talking to this guy, like, <laughs> like, dude, I come to this Alberts all the time. There's no way I'm going to let you, like, threaten me out of this place. Like, I'm going to hold my ground. I'm not going to say, yeah, fool, let's bang it out. I'm going to say, dude, you're an idiot in, you know, in a way that doesn't involve me getting stabbed. Yeah, yeah. You know, just like, so you I don't yeah. yeah, I, I c- curse him out in Arabic. Like, how do you suck the cars? Yeah. Oh, damn. Any of those Arabs out there, Teach see, me. I only know the bad words. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, anyway, so yeah, and I, I'm trying to remember exactly what went. I would have snuck that in while I was telling him, like, no, dude, I always eat here. Also, F- I do. I'm just like, I'm like, dude, does it look like we bang? He's like, stop looking at me. I'm like, whatever, dude. I was like, like dude, you're ugly, bro. It was I'm trying weird. not to. It was just weird. Oh, yes, anyway, and you know, living in Bellflower, you have those encounters. Yeah, you know how to handle them. It's no big deal, you know. And I, so anyway, the more attention you pay to a person like that, yeah. Wait, how did that resolve the whole thing? I, he's just, like, he stabbed me. We just it got our food. Deal. We just got our food and left. I was like, you know, he was just like, oh, stop looking at me. Then I'm like, dude, whatever. It's like, I'm just trying to get some food. Obviously, I'm not banging on you, bro. And he's like, blah blah. blah. He's like, oh yeah, stacko dresse. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, I'm yeah, sure. I love that. Taco. Like, I don't give a fuck, you know, whatever. He's like, tacos uh, asada, fool. That was a, that's what? a ghetto spot, weird. though, huh? I mean, no, like it's not. Like that's why I'm just like pissed off. Like, dude, you're repping like. It was a one on Alondra. The one on Alondra. No, it was one on Firestone. Oh, okay. Firestone was the best one. I'm not gonna be outed on my favorite Albert spot. Yeah. You know. But anyway, moral of the story: go go through the (laughs) drive-through. That's the one that didn't have a drive-through. I'll go to that weak ass one. Yeah. Yeah, the one in Bellflower. You want to get a fight? Go to the best one. I can't remember if we we went to got super fights the night that. There was one night where John and I went I like, to a I'm just party, super and then fast, sir. Oh my John and God. I went to a party one night, and then we you know went back to. Was, we couldn't go. We couldn't go back home that night to my house or your house. This is when we passed out in your car for a little bit. Yeah. And hey, did I take you guys to your first party though? No, no, no. Wait, we're gonna talk Whoa. about. We're gonna talk about. Yeah, oh. so many wait, 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 wait. Let's get to that one. But let me tell this right, one. Right. So there was one we night. We talked about that. There was one night where we haven't ever talked about this. We haven't. Hold on, but one second. You know that you know where we were that night. No, who's? That was Franz's party. Oh, jeez, dude. Rest in peace to Franz I Lopez. I just want to say, yeah, uh, because I just remember where we were, we were in Lakewood. Remember, we were at a house in Lakewood. They were living there. Franz Lopez, I knew his family for a long time when I worked at Valley Christian. And uh, it was very hard, and he passed away, and I found out on my birthday. Yeah. So it was. Uh, and he was in a lot rest, of. Rest in peace, man. We love you. Uh, Franz in peace, was man. also in a lot of. It, so it were was you. A lot of filming. In yeah, a lot of our movies. high school, my high school movies, I would make when the he war was a scout movies as well, and stuff. Right. He was a scout. He was a friend. Uh, so we were at his party, man. He graced us with it, and we got we had so much fun with him. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and then that night, so we, we yeah. took off. We well, fell asleep like around the block. You yeah. We needed. We're to gonna call this podcast bringing it down. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It's all good, dude. Like Franz, no, did, no, was a great okay. photographer too. But no, we, uh, love him. we love him. Love you. So I think we got super fries, and then we need a place to crash. We couldn't go to either of our houses, so I was like, let's yeah, just go to my we brother's were, we house. We were young. Yeah. Oh my god. So and I'm like, oh, that was that night. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When, we, when we broke into your place. Yeah. Yeah. No, Tom, I was like, I was like, my brother always leaves his sliding glass door unlocked. Dude. We drove all the way to Huntington Beach. Well, we got super fries first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, no. We, we, so we were, we were, and then we ate him in his living room. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, you know, because it was a, I didn't even give a shit. Oh, wait, no, you walked in, you're like, bro. Like, oh, right. cool, bro. Yeah, you guys no, were you good. Walked, you I came in that. and we were eating super fries, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and, hell yeah. We, we threw on a movie, eating super fries. And fry. Tommy's living Tommy room. walks out like, oh, what's up, guys? Uh, you know, he didn't know what was going on. Yeah. He was just saying, what's you up? You snuck through my window. We literally hey. snuck through your giant In my window. house, turned on my TV, put on a movie, and we're eating fries. I come out of my room like, what is that noise? And you're like, and, and then oh, Mitchell's up, like, dude? what's oh, what's up, dude? We were having a good time, and we needed we needed a place to crash. And I was just like, 
All right, all right, dude. All right, go cool. back to bed now. Right, see you. Right, cool. No, baby, it's fine. They're fine. That's see you cool. in the morning. It's just my brother. Yeah. And then, I, I, Ivy was like, just, Ivy was she concerned. Just goes with back, it. Yeah, yeah, Ivy was concerned in the background. I just, Tommy go, just she pushing just her back into the room. She's they're fine. She's they're shut fine. up. It's my brother. Yeah, it's Tommy. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's a getaway with jail. jail pass. Now the other story though that was when that was not our first party, but it was when we were very young and we went to a party in Belfast. And you guys did tell this story already on a podcast. We did. I think we did. Yeah, it was the, it was the one, one where there was a gang fight or shootout. No, there was some guy who brought a gun. It was on Mc, it was on Somerset and McNabb, right? And there was this guy. He busted out a gun in the backyard, and like was gonna hop the fence. I remember this. No, he was like in the back, and he like shot up like yeah. one time and then bounced or something. Yeah. No, I know because there was an altercation. I remember in the alleyway in between. Yeah. Like and so he just oh, and then like hopped the wall, and everyone's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and I remember like getting like we had a it was like a getaway situation where you're you're like the papa bear like all right let's get all like, you're like making sure all your friends are safe and we all got in the van and like well, where's John and I'm coming in <laughs> Dude, Let's go. Yeah, that's like, crazy. Took, we, we were and in the that six shit, we I was mad because I had to leave a pack of cigarettes on a table, dude. He's like, "Not I my camel crush. Like, I remember that. You're like, you're not like, my camel crush. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I gotta get my cigarettes. I remember that because they were on the kitchen counter strike. On the kitchen, yeah, that's right, dude. <laughs> Man, that was crazy. Wait, so I, I wanted to go go back real quick to when you, because uh, you, you were a bouncer for a couple of years. That was over at yeah, Midway Bar. Midway Bar. Okay, and, and did you ever run into trouble there, of or course. was it, or what was your like? The your place is so there? tiny. Yeah, it was. Well, it's a it, tiny bar, dude. It's a tiny and you were like the King's Cup champion there, weren't you? King's Cup, no, it was beer pong. Or beer pong beer champion. Pong. Yeah, beer. No, I play. Uh, that bar used to be a lot of fun. Because uh, they would have beer pong every Saturdays, and it was like a Bellflower reunion. You know, a lot of people would show up. You know, it was a lot of fun. Like you just always had a good time there. And then I, uh, Tom, the owner, uh, like just you know, I was I became a regular, and he was like, you know, this guy's this is a picture. This guy's from Boston, right? You know, like uh, he's a uh, he's a Marine. He's a Marine veteran, and so like he sounds amazing, coolest guy ever. And he's like, John, you want a job? I'm like, yeah, yeah, dude, sure. You know, thinking like, sure, why not? <laughs> and because first of all, like, if anything went down there, the place was filled with so many regulars. I would have so much support if something yeah. went bad. Because you happened. had so many friends who was in Bellflower. So many. Because you, when you were going there as a regular, you made a lot of friends. But then there would be probably times where you were working where you get what the big my muscle head comes along. Maybe no ID, maybe just a little too drunk to even So many people would try to come in with no IDs, kick them out. But there were some times where people would be in fights, have to break them up. And People you knew, maybe. Well, actually, th- you know, thankfully, no. I, didn't, I never had to, like, break up a fight with someone I knew. Okay. Because, you know, people I knew usually, they're smarter than that, you know? Yeah, like, come I'm, on, John's Shout right. out to all my friends who don't start fights for no damn reason. Yeah. Right? Proud <laughs> of you, proud of you. Um, but really, it was just one of those things where it happened few and far between where we had to, um, where we had to take... I had, to, you know, I had to take some guy out or, you know, put him on the ground or, like, Jesus. pick him up, throw him outside. It didn't happen too many times. Like, I bet you if I worked as a bouncer, like, on 2nd Street yeah. or downtown Fullerton, I would, first of all, hate my life because those places are just full of, just full of debauchery, dude. I hate, you know? Yeah. So it wasn't that bad. No, my dad and I, we saw you. I don't know if you remember one day going... We're driving down you guys uh, honk at me or We honked. I was like, John. Did I ever say? Yeah, yeah I think I was, yeah, You were wearing your hat because you would wear like your like Rocky Balboa hat, dude. Right? Rocky Balboa. Hat. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, oh yeah. I had um, I had like a little bidet or something. Yeah, yeah. dude. You we always would make you like like you were you played Rocky in one of my movies or no? You played uh. I didn't play Rocky. You played Rambo. And uh, Arnold Never Dies, remember? Oh my god. I made that movie, Arnold Never Dies. He had like the red bandana with the AK, cut off sleeves. And then Jack Heisman was the T1000. Oh my god, how long ago was that, dude? 2006? Oh, before that, yeah. Oh my god. Oh, dude, and then in 2004, we made that movie, Shells of Baghdad, which was like a Baghdad movie. You played the main bad guy. 2004? Yeah. Yeah, Mm. dude, so it was over 14 years ago. Dude, I hurt my back. Remember the character's name that you played? Uh, look, give me a second. Give me a second. I need to say this because it was actually it kind of you guys made up a name. You had a red, red and it almost made it actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My cousin told me like <laughs> you dude, yelled like, your name at the end. Aladi Zuhamad Arif. There it is, <laughs> Aladi Zuhamad Arif. And it actually it's funny because you guys made up that name, but it actually meant something in Arabic. My cousin and my dad were like, "What's your uh, name?" Aladi Zuhamad. And it Arif. actually meant like something to do with penis or something. <laughs> 
And here am I in high school, like, you know, yelling out this name. Uh, my, uh, and uh, my, my, my family watched the movie, the ones that speak Arabic, like, dude, what's your name? <laughs> yeah, I'm repping this shit. Yeah, yeah I'm repping this funny. shit. That must have been Zach's part of the writing process. He's like, come up with He, like, name. looked it up. He's like, what is come the most degrading the Arabic name? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, oh, my God. The most offensive name I could write. But it's weird, because I looked... I remember in that movie, I looked like... I looked like I was like a Cuban guerrilla fighter or something because huh? I had like green and like a red band. I Dude, if you looked like you do now with the beard, it would have been perfect because, I mean... Don't we... put me in another movie, Mitch. All right, I won't, I won't. All right. <laughs> Dude, that, what was the last thing I, I cast... I grow a beard in ninth grade, all right? Dude, the last thing I cast you in was Metal Tooth to play a cop. And I was like, all right, we need oh, to... Oh, <laughs> yeah, dude. Remember that? And I used your... You had a cop uniform. Yeah. And I used it. Remember, I did some like dancing and like. A, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You were, you were. It was the outtakes at the very end. It was I a metal tooth episode that we did. Up, I folded my arms up, pretending to be in jail, letting out what was it, John Dewar? John Dewar was getting letting, out of jail. Letting him out of jail, and I would just wave. And then the bloopers, like I'm like just dancing around yeah, in the cop like, uniform. The with, dancing cop. I had my mustache. Dude, uh, that was, my beard. Yeah. That was fun. And that was over in I think Lakewood that we shot that. I don't remember. But the scene where you arrest, uh, you arrested John in that scene was uh, that was actually in. Uh, Whittier Hills, or I don't remember at the, at the man- Oh, I do Ted remember Faye's mansion. Oh my God, yeah. Ted Faye's so mansion. We filmed can the, we, the can we just was... stop right there. Yeah, cause... we'll stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Ted Faye's mansion. Great. This movie is bullshit. Oh, this movie. My. Remember no. that? Wait, tell the story of this movie is bullshit. Remember we came out. We were like, we got to start a blog. Like, so Ted or a Faye blog where it was like. Us. Hey, when when YouTube was first taken off, me and John went, and everyone was doing reviews for movies. Oh, it was when we watched the horrible, horrible movie that is Exorcism of Emily Rose. Rose. And we walked that out. That was so horrible. And we are like, that movie was, and we looked at each other and we are like, bullshit. bullshit. And we just started singing. No, this it, movie is bullshit, yeah. bullshit, we're, bu- bu- bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> this movie was a bullshit, bullshit. We, yeah. we were so dumb and just like making up different songs to say bullshit because that's how... Just horrible. Yeah. That movie was. Yeah, that Awful. movie. That movie was pretty. Was pretty Moving horrible. on. Moving on. Yeah, dude. So, Actually, can I just drain the main vein real quick? Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for listening to this podcast. You've reached the end of Godfather Part One. Do not miss the second half of this interview. Uh, your life depends on it. Okay. All right. The kids are counting on you. Uh, if you miss it, bad things will happen. You will break out into erupting pustules, covering your eyes. Uh, you'll never walk again. <laughs> we out like a belly button, baby! Yeah. Woo!